Hello everyone. How's it going? I'm a bit late. I'm three minutes late, but I have a very good excuse. I was making coffee. There is no good stream without a good coffee. Even though I drink decaf, but uh, I don't know what's the point of it, but at least it actually fills up my stomach when I'm f fasting. And uh, it still tastes okay, since I don't drink, don't smoke. At least some poison, you know? So I had to make myself some piss, which is called decaf. Anyway, welcome to the stream. Today's gonna be a fun one. We're gonna be discussing something that uh, hopefully is not gonna get, get me banned on social media. Because I've been watching some podcasts of Joe Rogan and Lex Friedman and uh, different people for quite some time. I've been their fan for, for, for a long time. And uh, the stuff they talk about, you know, aliens and conspiracies and COVID and uh, Jeffrey Epstein type of stuff. And it's, it's all very interesting. Um, and I, it always, you know, surprised me and the Carlson guy that they never got banned on social media. Like Andrew Tate got banned. Well, arguably he took stuff a bit too far, but uh, with, with his um, woman stuff. But it surprised me that, you know, Joe Rogan doesn't get banned. So I was like, okay, you know what? At least let me try to make a stream. Let me talk to people about trading. We're also gonna possibly uh, take a trade, see what is happening with my uh, challenge from 1 million to 10 million. And uh, also at the same time, while we are trading, while we are looking at the price and stuff, uh, we're also going to uh, discuss very interesting stuff that I just, I just cannot be quiet anymore. I just, I just can't. Like I speak to people and I realize that they're just so clueless that I, I just want to offer at least some, some guidance as to what is about to happen because shit is about to hit the fan and us, we, we know it. I speak to a lot of interesting people who have a lot of money and a lot of influence and uh, they talk about, well, it's not really doomsday scenario. It is here. It is real. We're seeing the cracks. And unfortunately, the 99% are living in their small bubble, like really small, and they have no understanding of it. They, I don't know if they just don't want to know. But uh, yeah, I just want to shed some light on the reality of the current state and go a little bit deeper into the rabbit hole and hope that you guys will enjoy it. Uh, tell, okay, uh, somebody's saying that uh, the sound is uh, not good. So tell me, is the sound okay? Is the picture okay? Because hopefully today we're not gonna have problems with the camera because I changed the settings a bit. Hopefully it's gonna be okay. So tell me if the sound is okay, if the picture is good. Sound is fine, okay. All right. All okay. So, am I, this is a good one. Am I okay? Uh, oh, no. Not, not that one. Somebody just asked me a question if I'm okay. Okay, anyway, but yes, I am okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> okay, everything is good. Fine. I don't know how long this stream is going to be, but uh, I just want it to be very concise and very, very useful. And um, if you guys want to support me in this endeavor, I would really, I, I really am interested what is going to happen to the algorithm of YouTube when it starts picking up in a couple of minutes on the stuff I'm going to be talking about. I don't know. I don't know if it's going to actually push the stream or uh, if it's going to be less people watching, if it's going to be less than 1500 people or like 2000 people that we usually have in the stream at any given second. That means that the algorithms are not liking what I'm saying or people are not liking it. That's also uh, possible because the truth Friends is oftentimes very bitter and a lot of times people get very sensitive. They do not want to believe anything that is outside the scope of their reality and their bubble or maybe outside of the scope of what their government or their system, their parents or whatever their surrounding has been telling them. And I don't want to be the one breaking the, the, the paradise they're living in, but so fucking be it. Let's get into it. And probably I'm going to be using a lot of swear words today. So if you're sensitive, don't comment any shit, just fuck off. So let's get into it. First, let's talk about trading. Uh, oh no, not this one. Let's get uh, this out of the way. So we just see what is happening. I'm gonna add some orders and then I'm gonna be trying to uh, take some questions a bit later. Let me just switch to the other screen. Let me go over some stuff because honestly today I'm gonna be discussing outside of the scope of trading itself, some of the stuff I've never discussed. I'm gonna discuss some really deep stuff of me, of my life, but not in a sense of, you know, just talking about me, blah, blah, blah. 
but actually to shed some light on my thinking on how I'm preparing for what's coming in the world and in my life and um, maybe you will get something out of it hopefully you will and just to be uh, very clear what I'm going to be discussing is shared as, as, as a uh, idea is the ideology shared by a lot of very wealthy and powerful people that I have been happily in touch with and have in my surrounding. So, and maybe they will be even watching the stream and they will be upset that I'm sharing it because what I'm about to share is not for the ears of the 99%. So, but anyway, uh, let's get into it. Before we talk about all of this, let's just get trading out of the way. And first and foremost, in terms of my trade, everything is still the same. Actually, this is the drawing from my previous video. And guys, oh, I, I just remembered. If you want to support the stream, I don't want to be fucking, I'm tired of begging for likes and subscribes. It's up to you. You like what I'm talking about, like the stream. It's going to actually help it for it to go out into the algorithms. You don't want to like it. I fucking don't like it. It's up to you. But I would appreciate it. Also, there is a share button uh, here on YouTube. You can share it on your social media to get more people in here so people actually hear it. Because people, from my experience, that I'm talking a lot of people to a lot of people and my employees, and uh, just quite frankly, I see that people have no understanding what is going on. So the more people at least get this information and at least have a reason to think outside of the box would be great. And I think that they would thank you down the road. So if you feel like doing so, share this stream. There is a share button down below. And uh, yeah, so now. Trading, because, you know, I'm trying, you know, a lot of times people said, Thomas, you're shilling shit too much and this and that. And uh, maybe you guys are right. I don't know. So I'll try to just give you more alpha, give you more real thoughts, real ideas, real context, real, you know, juice and something that you can actually use to your advantage other than, you know, these shields and stuff. Because I know how, how, how complicated it can be. But at the same time, you know, if you don't ask for a like, nobody usually leaves likes. But let's, let's check. Let's see. I will shut up about it and just give you alpha. So about alpha, let's just get to it. Uh, this. This. Okay. So the idea, it actually stays absolutely same. For now, we're still shorting Bitcoin. When it comes to our challenge from 1 million to 10 million, we currently are up 55,000. Hmm which is less than what I've expected. I thought that in the first week or two, we would at least make 10%, so 100,000 in a week, so that, that would make it 400,000 in a month. But for now, it is just what it is. We positioned ourselves how we positioned ourselves. Our uh, portfolio is same. I did not change anything in it. You can um, have a look at what I have in the portfolio. Toncoin got filled... Um, the sell order got filled, some take profit order basically right here. So we picked some up here. We also had some orders to buy more. And our first take profit was taken because there were a lot of news on Toncoin. So and then our next one that, you know, at $4, I'll be getting out of Toncoin completely, at least for the time being. So we're taking some very good trades slowly here and there. Um, yeah, basically these... Shit coins like ladies actually have been trying to pump. Uh, Bob is trying to do something. We knew. So they were actually quite down. Grape is doing nothing. That's quite sad. We have a big loss on grape. Even though it listed, we were, we were having some hopium on it. But whatever. It's like you get into these and you're just sitting on them knowing that the, the bull market is here. So all these like sometimes these old coins, they just sit there, do nothing and then suddenly explode. So we'll just keep them. Um, about copy trading. So our accounts, I know guys, and I just want to apologize for by a bit how it is with the whitelist because these accounts, you can actually follow them. I, you can actually go to them. Let me. Yeah, so there's two of them. There is Crawlo Trades and Crawlo High Risk. So there's just two different strategies. You can read about strategies here. And it's been such a... Um, horrible experience to onboard people into it because of the whitelist and this whitelist got full the links got full so uh, we were trying to fix it and and actually in the last 30 days which this account was active for only 17 days um, we had we made $25,000 for our followers so basically people click two buttons and they trade and my team trades and there is my trades as well we had about 200 something trades, 177 trades were profitable and 60 trades were losing and uh, 
uh, profit to loss ratio 1.52, which is not ideal, but we're working on improving it. And uh, yeah, so this is quite cool, quite stable. Um, and yeah, also with Kralo Trades, same thing in the last 30 days, we made 13,000 bucks, but this is like smaller risk. Again, you can also read everything, the strategies here, the description, how many trades you can expect, et cetera. But normally you would want to keep these for at least one or two months to actually evaluate the performance. If you just copy it for one day and then, you know, bitch about it, you shouldn't do that. So you should at least copy it for a few months and forget about it and let us do the thing. And we're going to also discuss this as to why I'm doing it and why we're testing this hypothesis. And uh, yeah, so a lot of quite a lot of people are making money with this here. Uh, our followers, as you can see, all green. Somebody made 9%, 9%, 10%, 15%, 19% percent in 11 days. There was a person made 19% with us in just 11 days. So by doing fucking nothing. And if you want to, just real quick, if you want to f actually do it yourself uh, and follow us, then what you need to do is you need to go to this website, which there's going to be a link uh, in the description of the stream. Um, it's copycrawlertrades.com. So the, the only rule is you need to have Bybit account and you need to use my link to sign up with Bybit. So you need to be under me in Bybit. And you can use this button right here. And even if you have an account already, then you need to create a new one if you didn't use my link when you created the account. And for the time being, you need to go into the into YouTube um, and under anyone. Oh, this is my live right now. So, and right here, you will actually see a copy trading whitelist. And here you just need to click on this form right here and you need to put in your Bybit UID. So right here you will basically put in your Bybit UID and that's about it. So and then you will be whitelisted within like 24 uh, to 30, uh, 24 like to 48 hours. So very simple, very straightforward. And then you will be added to the whitelist and then you can finally go to copycrawlertrades.com. And very important, you need to use these buttons right here. So don't go directly in Bybit looking for these accounts, but go to copycrawlertrades.com and use these buttons right here to go and copy. I, I know it's fucking complicated, it's stupid, but Bybit promised to fix it in the next week so that it will be up to 5,000 people. Just simply go to this button, create an account using my link and copy the trades. That's it. For now, it's complicated and I apologize for any misunderstandings, but it's just how it is. But overall, uh, our copy trading is quite cool. I mean, this is just some of the stuff I'm going to be discussing today is going to be about the reason why we're testing this because we're not really doing this to make much money, but it's because it's not really that very much under management. We have like half a million dollars, 600,000. But uh, we're just testing it and seeing how it works and whether people really get anything out of it. And so far, it's actually quite good. People are making decent money, decent percentages with this. So yeah, anyway, uh, next, what I wanted to mention is when it comes to the trade itself in derivatives. So let's go to the derivatives. And uh, here we will have our trade that has realized, this is nice because these four and a half thousand I made by doing nothing. And this is what I described in my previous stream is when you're holding a short right now, you're actually getting paid the funding rate, the funding rate you can actually see it, where is it? Oh, there it is. So the funding rate right now is 0 0.06. And this is what you're getting paid every eight hours on the size of your short trade by the long trades. So theoretically, like with this trade, I'm getting paid 3000 bucks per day or like two and a half thousand dollars by doing nothing, by just holding it. For now, it is a uh, small unrealized loss. And I, again, we were opening and building it slowly here. I closed a part of it here just to deleverage it because there was no impulse. And right now we are arguably in the bull market. So it is very dangerous to be shorting anything, quite frankly. It is very dangerous, but there is a lot of, and I, I, I'm not going to be getting into too much detail uh, as to why we are shorting because I described all of this already so many times. I gave you all the technical reasons and it is actually not a gamble. It is a good trade that could play out, might not play out. It's not financial advice, it's just what we are doing. But in all fairness, if it wasn't for this challenge that we were doing from 1 million to 10 million, 
I wouldn't be doing it because right now you should be looking more towards building long trades. Even if the price goes down and there is a pullback, you should be more focused on building long trades than short trades because long trades are by default less risky just because of the parabolic moves that we have right now. But, you know, since we're doing this challenge, might as well do some dumb shit and maybe make extra money or lose some money. So that's why do your own research. And yeah, if you want to do what I'm doing, you can also trade on Bybit. And there is also the links to Bybit uh, that you can actually claim real uh, deposit bonuses up to 30,000 links down description. So uh, yeah, basically that's it. But let me add, because right now it's a $750,000 trade. Let's make it a $1.5 million trade. So people later don't scream at me saying, oh, Thomas, your video title doesn't resemble what there is in the video. So let me just add some orders because uh, of my logic here. And my logic was, I showed it to you in the previous video, but let me just quickly go over it once again, that right now, technically, we have been in this wedge and we are kind of breaking down, but like, to be honest, it's just doing nothing. So I would not be even considering this a breakout from this wedge because there is no impulse. And to be honest, I don't like seeing it. But what is possible here is that the market makers might push the price a bit higher and then finally we're going to go into this small correction down to like 55k because my targets on it currently are right here so there are my orders to take profit so my last order to close this trade is fifty-four thousand two hundred dollars so it really is a very short-term quick scope trade well not scope trade like micro swing trade and uh, that's about it so also, if we look at Fibonacci time zones, not Fibonacci retracement like these horizontal ones, but the vertical ones, you can study them in uh, Google if you want. According to them, which actually recently have proven to be quite accurate, and again, even if we correct a bit, you know, uh, on a long enough time horizon, this correction, even down to 55K, for example, to just barely retest this used to be resistance of this spreading wedge, just retest this one and then move higher, just technically, again, it's all just probabilities, it's not a guarantee of anything, would make quite good sense, 55, 54, this vicinity, and then move off. What we are saying, uh, going back to the Fibonacci vertical uh, time zones, according to those, which actually recently we were backtesting them for quite some time, and we did use them slightly here and there for our decision making and trading, but slightly, not too crazily, but slightly. Again, because it's all about methods and tools and different stuff that we were using. And according to them, starting with March 9th in this, these red brackets and March, I oh know, March 6th, um, apologies, March 3rd and March 9th. So these six days, according to Fibonacci time zones, are slightly bearish. And again, I'm not going to be discussing as to how, why, blah, blah, blah. If you want to research it, go to Google and it's going to explain as to how it works and why does it, like, how does it predict it. So, and then there is the time of uncertainty, which is between March 9th and March 12th, and then back to the parabolic move. And that is the beginning of March 12th and March 15th. And these actually, it might sound like you're trying to fucking predict nonsense, but these things, and I always thought about them in the same way, but... According to our backtesting, they have been quite accurate quite often, which seems like magic. But actually, when you dig deeper, you'll understand that there is something interesting behind them. So therefore, there is just a probability of us going a tiny bit lower. And actually, if we do go into profit here, which my average entry price right now is 61000 I'll probably, just to even more limit my risks here, I will probably put my stop loss into profit somewhere in that area then subscribe hit that notification bell i'll keep you guys updated to the best of my ability so that even if it pumps like crazy again so that you know if i'll lose something i'll lose something very small but also besides this before this could happen because there is still time for us to enter into this short area and this dump area what I would consider doing myself is adding a bit more to this short and making a higher average entry price. So if we do actually pump a bit higher, so I will add a bit more to it. So my would average entry price would go up again, and then it would be easier for me to make a profit if we just retrace to, let's say, something small like 58,000. When if we would retrace down to 58 now, I wouldn't really make that very much. So for this reason, and that again, I would scale it maximum up to like 1.5 million. So therefore, let me just put in the orders 
because I know the prices, the ones that I want. I want 64,943. Uh, yeah, so quantity, I don't want quantity. I want the value. So this price, let's add another 200,000. Open short. So we are adding short here. In case it does wick higher, we also want to do 684. Another 200,000. And then just one bigger one. It's 66, 648. And this one I do 350, which will be like this one big one. I really like to build them in this way. So in case if we do go higher, we're going to actually take up another 750,000 in uh, shorts. And then if it does keep pumping, which again is possible, there, there has to always be a correction, always historically. Whenever we move in parabolic moves, there is always corrections on the way. So all I'm doing here is trying to short a possible correction that is overdue according to the funding rate and so much shit that we are seeing right now that is just unrealistic as per the market and liquidity and market makers and ADL, Google ADL, if you don't know what that is. So there is very good reasons why we're shorting it short term. We are not shorting it down to 30,000 or something stupid. Like there is people are saying, oh, I'm going to short Bitcoin to 20,000. I don't like I would be very surprised if we would see Bitcoin at 40,000. I would be like, wow, something huge needs to happen for Bitcoin to suddenly slide to 40. Maybe a correction like huge liquidations of long trades because we only have long trades. Barely anyone is shorting, barely. So if there would be a cascading liquidations to the downside, maybe down to 50K, 55. That's why like my last order is like 54. So I'm just trading a correction. I'm not a small one. I'm not trying to trade the beginning of the next fucking bear market. That would be stupid. So yeah, that's, that's basically all about the orders. Uh, we spoke about copy trading, we spoke about inflation, that actually it's looking quite good, so there is nothing to worry about it. We have crazy inflows into the ETFs. Oh, okay, so that's not opening, that's not opening. We have crazy uh, greed right now, which is just insane at 80. That's why it's also another signal that you know there has to be some kind of a correction. Coinbase, actually, you know, that's also something cool that Coinbase crashed when we had Bitcoin going to 64. But despite this, what we are saying right now, uh, which I wanted to show you, ah, yeah, this is actually very interesting. That's why I said like 50K, maybe, but there is an empty pocket of liquidity on the way to 50K, but that's about it. And also here is the Fibonacci time targets and time zones, which I just spoke about. You can actually research these, very interesting. And uh, now let's get into what I really, really wanted to speak to you guys about while we are looking at the short trade play out. Um, yeah, so let me quickly switch here. Uh, let me check the comments. If oh, that's interesting. Salloway had 30k like yeah I don't know I, I know I, I don't know him personally uh, I've heard of him I've seen his content I've seen cryptos or us George he was talking about Salloway's crazy target right now and this is like this is something that is in my opinion stupid a lot of people are saying that my short trade is stupid and kind of in a way it is but again for with the reasoning we have we are expecting a correction will it happen now will it come from 66000 or will it stop us out go to 70k and then correct from the all time high who knows maybe you know if i get wrecked in the short trade i will just really give up on shorting and i will be only longing and fuck it you know i'll be done with the shorts for this bull market but yeah i agree like with the, like these kinds of targets down to 30000 Wow, fuck, I don't know what needs to happen. I don't know, we need to have another pandemic. I don't know, maybe America suddenly deciding to ban Bitcoin or some shit. Okay, yeah, but like, what's the likelihood of these things happening? So th these kinds of targets is a bit, a bit, a bit much, a bit crazy. Um, yeah, so anyway, while, while we were looking at it and we were seeing, okay, so for now we have uh, 1,300 1, 1, people watching. So this means that the algorithms for now are actually doing okay. And now I'm gonna be getting into the juice, into what has been itching my soul while we're looking at this trade and hopefully maybe we'll
put in some more orders maybe we'll see what happens to the price but again over the weekend most likely it will just stagnate because right now with so many inflows and so many institutionals that right now Bitcoin is going to be more following what institutionals are doing, which are working only on the working days. So therefore, the weekends usually are quite safe. But maybe for some scope trades up and down from some resistance levels could be quite interesting. So uh, but now let's let's discuss something that, guys, honestly has been on my mind for for very long uh, while we're looking at the price. And um, I'll also be getting to your questions that I've been, you know, um, a lot of people have been, you know, loving what I do and a lot of people have been hating on what I do. I think that for the most part, if you go to... So if you go to Instagram... Uh, okay. I need to log in somehow. Let me try to... I need to log in. Just give me a second, guys. I promise it's going to be worth it. This is going to illustrate my point. Because what, what I'm seeing now in the world, I'm talking to so many people and in my companies across all the products we have, we employ more than 100 people. You will not believe it, but I actually employ more than 100 people. So I pay them salaries and they actually support their family. So there are hundreds of people that are financially dependent on me, arguably. And I speak to so many of them and because we are working on building this inner communication and support and whatnot. And... What I, so many realizations came to my mind in the recent months and um, what I, and also I've been reading comments by people who are just, you know, my followers among you guys and some of those comments have been incredibly positive, which I really thank you for. Some of them have been ridiculously stupid and just unbearable, which shows me how stupid the humanity is at this point. But overall, it just showed me how it all works right now and what the governments are doing and what actually lays ahead as of right now for us and in my opinion anything outside the scope of what i'm going to tell you in this video is all just a big lie and i look at what the governments are doing what the politicians are saying what the projections we have right now in the world and um I understand very well that if you are not positioned correctly in 2024 and 2025, you're going to be fucked, like badly, very badly, financially, politically, physically, God forbid, and so on. So, and again, I really hope that you guys will listen to what I'm saying. I'm not going to try to, you know, force you into anything or sell you anything. Uh, it's just my view as a person who has built something in life, I don't consider myself to be the best businessman or trader or whatever. But at the same time, I do pay attention to what is happening. I do pay attention to the world itself. And uh, I just want to share some of the things. Uh, anyway, here is my Instagram. So what I wanted to show you. Um, so if you go to my Instagram, and we'll come back to it. Let me see if it's if I'm actually showing it correctly. If you go to my Instagram, oftentimes why I'm saying I'm just again, I really like to build a story so you guys understand where my thought process is coming from, how it came about and how it was built. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, please do so. Uh, and I just today also posted uh, post about today's stream. So if you're from Instagram, hello. <laughs> and if you go to my Instagram and you will look at it, you will see a dude which says, well, trader, hedge fund manager, mentor, or some other dude trying to sell you something or trying to get your money or oh, private jet, something about trading, you know, cars, some crypto stuff. Oh, look at this. What is this? 
Like <laughs> a lot of people, you know, a lot of people who are seeing this content, they're like, who is this dude? Like, who, how ridiculous is this? Have you ever seen any asset manager out there in the world posing with a million bucks or whatever, like in a bathtub in Buljal Arab in the seven star hotel with some girl who is by coincidence, my wife of seven years. And uh, yeah, so it's like, it, it looks all ridiculous, like honestly. But the reason I'm saying that I'm quite wildly misunderstood is because when you're seeing this with this perspective that you just go to the Instagram, you need to understand one simple truth. I'm giving people what they want to see. And I'm playing on their greed. I am playing on their emotions. The only difference is that I don't do it with an ill intent. I don't do it with an ill intent as many others who are actually aiming to scam people, to steal their money, to launch some shit coins and then rock people. I don't do this kind of stuff. But I also, unfortunately, through Instagram, I cannot really open up. I cannot really speak my mind for two reasons. There is two main reasons. And I promise there is a reason why I'm telling you all of this. So please, this stream is for you. So uh, please just stay till the end. I promise it's going to be worth it. So you understand the context. So when the two reasons, reason number one is that people are simply uninterested in deep stuff. As soon as you start talking about something complicated, something uh, really technical, people skip. People leave, they, you know, write some shit comment and they're because they're just confused. They don't want to learn. They just go. But when you post a picture with a million dollars in cash in bathtub, like, look, just, just to prove the point. And this is going to actually feed the narrative about the future of humankind. Here, is, here was a post that I have written, which was a very smart post, just a regular picture. As you can see, there is 7,000 likes on it. As soon as you post something fucking ridiculous like this, look at it. 40,000 likes. So this, guys and girls, proves the whole entire concept I'm going to be sharing during this live stream. People are not interested in learning anything. They say they do, but in reality, only 1% is actually interested. The other 99%, they're simply, they really want others to do everything for them. They find a reason why the world is unfair, which it is. It is very unfair. And only the ones who actually understand it and just accept it and just try to pick up their shit and fucking move on actually make it. Because they realize that besides work, there's nothing else left. But then there is Instagram that is designed to attract people. It's designed to bring in the audience. It's designed to do that. So when you're trying to give people what's actually valuable, they are not interested. It's like with Bitcoin. When Bitcoin is at 17,000, nobody's interested. You know, when I'm making a video, guys, please buy Bitcoin here. I'm buying half a million dollars worth of Bitcoin. This video is going to probably be so fucking famous. It's still in my YouTube channel. People are like saying, Thomas, you're insane. But when people, but what, when Bitcoin is at 64,000, guess what happens? Coinbase crashes. That's how it is. This is the logic of people. The fucking opposite of what it's supposed to be. So, and because of this, my content is how it is, especially on Instagram. Like YouTube is different, but Instagram is just to attract people. And look, through this kind of bullshit content, and I, I'm not even afraid to say it, bullshit content, I was able to accumulate 1.3 million followers in like a year in one year. So it just shows, it just says what people think. They don't, they just don't think. So that's why I decided to this live stream, trade the bit together and talk about things that really are of utmost importance. And let's begin by looking at the following. So I prepared some stuff for you that I think is going to really explain what is coming in the world and how you can prepare and what I'm personally doing and etc. Uh, no, not this. Okay, so let's have a look at this. Those of you who know basic macro research and general research will love this. This is personal savings rate. This is how much money uh, median uh, households have. And right now we have personal savings rate. During COVID, we had a huge spike in personal savings rate because guess what? 
people were jerking off, sitting at home, doing nothing, and they were getting paid by uh, the government for doing so. And that's why there were a lot of stimulus checks and a lot of that money went to the market. Hence, we had huge rallies and huge inflation. So, and then guess what happened? This is like what happens to stupid people. It's like they blow it all. It's all gone. It's like a lot of the money actually during this time went into things like trading, gambling, Amazon purchases. Even, I'm not even afraid of saying it, but even Pornhub subscriptions just went parabolic. Because people are at home, they have extra few dollars to their name. Why not pay 50 bucks a month for porn? That's what people are doing. And at the same time, while, and actually, of course, all of this has ended. And right now we went to the levels that we haven't seen even during huge recessions during 2008 and 9, right here. Look, at 2008, right now people have about same amount of money or a bit less, like in the same, same area. However, and it's like, it's despite the fact that we have insane amounts of money in the world. Like, it's insane how much money there is. I don't want to sound like Andrew Tate, and I'm not supporting him in any way, but some of the things he's been saying are quite accurate. So the amount of money there is, and if, if you're in Dubai, if you look at people and how they live here, a million dollars is nothing. Half, like, half a billion is also nothing. A billion these days ain't much. It, you, it, you cannot fathom how much money there is in the market. But somehow, people's 99% of people, their saving rate is at the bottom. Literal, and you can see it in statistics. And also, I forgot to pull it up, but also, if you just pay attention to what the currently is the rate of credit card debt, you will see that it's at an all-time high. So our credit card debt, government debt, every fucking possible debt there is, is at the all-time high. Personal savings are at the all-time low. But at the same time, despite the fact that there is so much money in the world, where is all of that money? Where is it? I'll show you where it is. This money is right here. And in particular, Elon Musk, whatever, uh, Jesus, Jeff Bezos, whatever, who is number three? And when I realized this, I was like, holy fuck, no way. It's this guy, Bernard Arnold. And he's a genius. Like, I admire him. This guy is a fucking G. So if we go and like, he's a CEO and basically the owner of what? Mayot, Shandon, Hennessy. And of course, of course, Louis Vuitton. Beautiful. Bellissimo. So this basically, uh, this dude got rich off of selling people a rich look. So while we have record levels of credit card debt, we have record low amount of personal savings, and we have Bernard Arnold, who is the owner of Louis Vuitton, which is here, this is the piece of shit. So like, I like Louis Vuitton myself. It's, I don't know, the camera doesn't focus. This stuff, I mean, it's nice. This like, this is the watch patch. That's like a thousand bucks. Oh, there is another one. Like I'm also a fucking victim of it. Uh, wallet, like I have a shit ton of shit from Louis Vuitton, my, half of my, I probably, I looked at my uh, Louis Vuitton spending, I spent like $80,000 at Louis Vuitton in the last 12 months, I was like, am I an idiot or something? But then again, it's marketing, and I was like, I was sitting there, and I was like, what is it, why? And I was like, okay, like, if you look at these things, they really are good quality. Like if you compare it to Philip Line and all this garbage, then actually out of all things, Louis Vuitton, it actually is good quality. It actually is like, it, it feels good. It feels nice. So it's, of course, it's, it's ridiculously expensive. It's not worth it, like at all. You can go to a Turkish bazaar and you can get this fucking thing for 50 bucks and it will be almost as good. So it just means like how much they're overcharging you. But like, Again, the difference is that I can actually afford this stuff, you know, like I don't care, like a thousand bucks for me is like basically nothing. But the problem becomes when people who make a thousand bucks a month go buy themselves a thousand dollar wallet. This is, ladies and gentlemen, a fucking disease. And it shows me how bad the situation actually is. And let me get into the further, like I'm giving the, the entire picture and you be the judge. So let's move on to this here. A lot of people are talking about the control of the world. Like we already established, so by all of this stuff, what did we establish? That people are not very smart. 
people are not forward-looking, people are extremely uneducated, and if they actually knew what could be coming and what I'm going to be sharing in this stream, they would, like Bernard Arnold would not be as rich as he is because people would be like, holy shit, I need to be safe, I need to have a financial cushion, but what people care about is to look great on Instagram so they make this dude extremely rich. But again, don't get me wrong, Louis Vuitton is a great brand, I like them, and I've spent a lot of money at them, but only because I can afford it. I can afford this crap. But unfortunately, their marketing, and I spoke to some guys in Louis Vuitton because I'm friends with top managers and stuff, because I'm a big client, relatively, and I speak with them, and they actually told me, you know what they told me? They were like, Thomas, you will not believe it, and we probably shouldn't say it, but our target audience, and also the same thing as Gucci, it's also Prada, it's also all this garbage, uh, it's all, their, uh, their target audience is not rich people. It's not people who make a lot of money. It's the poor people who want to look rich. You don't want to believe me? Don't believe me. Of course, rich people still buy Louis Vuitton. Again, I'm also a big client of Louis Vuitton and I make far more than a million dollars a year. I make millions and I can afford these things. So there is also rich people who buy their stuff. I mean, I was invited to their exclusive um, like showing and stuff. They also do jewelry and some of their bracelets, like really bracelets that are one of one cost like $1.5 million, a bracelet. Insane shit. But so that means that also rich people are also clients of Louis Vuitton. But for the most part, their main income source is the poor people who want to look rich. And it just shows us what is happening in the economy. And it actually has direct implication on trading and on what we can see in the market and how the price develops in general. And the same shit happened. This is what Michael Burry has predicted. Back in 2008, when we saw a huge collapse, when we saw this housing market, this whole housing bubble, it, 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 it was the same taste in the air. Of course, the situation is different, macro is different, liquidity is different, everything is different right now. But even he has said like, when a hooker or a stripper that has literally zero official income source has three mortgages for three villas, five cars, uh, like it's insane. Credit was so cheap and so easy to get, like the money was so cheap that it had to collapse. So the same thing when you're saying that people are so poor, but they're still getting into debt to buy this garbage. How is this different? It's not. So let's continue. Let's just go deeper into the rabbit hole. And for now, let's have a look what is happening here. Nothing much. Uh, yeah, just standing in the same place. Uh, let's move on to... Mm, yeah, this one. A lot of people are saying, oh, you know, Illuminati, Thomas, you're your part of Illuminati, you know, because I also have uh, like Illuminati tattoos on my back. I have three pyramids. I also have one on my arm, one on my back, one on my leg. And people are like, ah, oh, he's Illuminati. That's why he's rich. Boo. Like fucking peasants. It's so stupid. <laughs> Like they think I just went to some store somewhere in the basement and I signed the contract and I kind of picked, ah, I want to have this, I, have, I want to have this and this, and I've sold my soul. This is so stupid. And, but the thing is that those who actually are in power, the ones we're going to talk about, and that's where I'm interested whether algorithms are going to shut down the stream and it's going to all just go bloop and turned off. This is not what people need to worry about. Not about Illuminati. Actually, the reason why I have Illuminati tattoos, actually, I don't have Illuminati tattoos. The tattoos that I have are of pyramids. And pyramids are not just Illuminati. Pyramids are symbols of enlightenment, knowledge, and prosperity, and great luck. So it depends on how you look at these things. So people are just ridiculous. They see a pyramid, that's fucking it. It's all Illuminati. Jesus fucking Christ. If you do some research, actually, Illuminati was disbanded in... It was created in, I think... 1660 something and then there was huge disarray inside of the organization itself and it was shut down four years later by the German government and that's it and it was created by some peasant literally a peasant who couldn't afford to join the stonemasons who later became freemasons and he couldn't afford the joining fee so he was like fuck you I'm gonna create my own organization and he called it Illuminati and four years later it actually fell apart 
Those people who still think Illuminati exists are fucking stupid. Stupid. And what, but those people who really are in power, those who you should really be paying attention to, they are not really in the shadows, quite frankly. Some of them are out in the light. But the stupid degens, they're following Illuminati stuff, so they're too busy to really see what is really happening. So what is really happening? Whom really should we pay attention to? And it is not Illuminati. What you should be paying attention to is this guy, as an example. Those of you who know who this is, you already are doing okay, because you at least are aware. So this is Klaus Schwab. He is the chairperson of the World Economic Forum, or WEF. WEF has been created long, long time ago, in the 70s or so, and a lot of very powerful people are gathering at the WEF. It's a, a lot of the meetings are closed doors, and what they are discussing, what they're doing, who the fuck knows. It's a non-elected organization, something that really has power. So the same thing goes for the following. The World Economic... Ah, uh, no, this, this is... Yeah, so this is the WEF. And then we also have... Ah, no, what I wanted to put in here is the... Not the WEF, but the IMF. So the IMF is the International Monetary Fund. And this has been created when the New World Order was actually instilled and began uh, after the Second World War in basically in 45. This is also when uh, United States became the global reserve currency, the dollar became, and the US became the not dominant power. And this is who actually dictates, which is also basically non-elected in a way, and they're dictating more decisions than the current imbecile president of the United States, Biden. Like, I don't even like know why this person, like the government of the United States is not run by Biden. Biden cannot even drive a fucking car, you know? And then Democrats are voting for like, it's ridiculous. I don't even get me started on the politics, but I'm getting uh, sidetracked here. So this is whom you should be paying attention to because these are people who are actually uh, strong arming governments, countries, uh, organizations, banks to do what they want. And what do they want? They want limited human capacity to be independent, which actually translates into what they're currently doing with the economy. And I'm going to get to it. I'm going to get to it. Uh, next thing is the World Bank. It's the same shit. It's the same as the IMF. You should study these. These are the actual organizations that actually have the power, not some imaginary Illuminati. Or if you want to actually have a, um, some kind of a, what's it called? metaphor, then I would say that these three are the actual Illuminati, not the Illuminati that was created in 16-something by some fucking peasant. So now this comes to mind. And that, this is beautiful. Like, this is amazing. And people are so unaware of it because they're just living in their small bubbles. They're just too busy with their dishes going to the supermarket to pick up groceries and they're just too lazy to reach it. And they're just, you know, they're, they have somehow missed it. But they complain a lot because they don't have any money for anything. But when they actually complain, they should study a bit. So if you study a bit deeper, what you will see is this. Ah, uh, why? What a shitty coffee, but at least it doesn't have co ca caffeine. Because if I'm going to get some caffeine, I'm going to be jumping up and down like I'm on ca cocaine. So uh, U.S. median home prices versus median household income. So this is basically the comparison of what a house in the United States costs in comparison to how much money people actually make. And as you're going to see, like, I don't know if this is adjusted for inflation or not. I have no idea. Maybe not. Maybe yes. But anyway, it just paints a good picture anyway. So the median household, I think it is adjusted for inflation because income was growing, certainly. But uh, yeah, I think it is adjusted for inflation because it's pretty stagnant. So in comparison to 20, 30 years ago, you might be making more money per hour but this money itself, because of inflation, has less buying power. So previously, you could buy one week's worth of groceries for 50 bucks. Right now, you need 500. So that's just how it is with inflation. And therefore, inflation is also affecting the uh, home prices and by a sub more substantial margin. So which means that people who make the same amount of money no longer can afford a house. They can barely afford rent. So therefore, and despite the fact, again, as I said, so many people, uh, there is so much money in the world. So where is all that money? 
And we go back to the same. It is the 1% of the 1% of the 1%. So all the money is actually accumulated in the hands of the few. Like if I were to tell you how much money is made by some people that I know, you would not believe it. Like you would not believe it. Uh, just to give you an example, like I'm 29 years old. Uh, we had like even, for example, like when you're saying like, oh, Thomas, you're a shilling, buy a bit, this and that. Yes. Why am I shilling by a bit? It's a good business. Why do I do social media? It's a good fucking business. I mean, we, through stories, we built one of the biggest retro farms in the world. We raised $10 million in literally 30 days. Uh, if it wasn't for social media, how would I do it? Same thing with my education. We are making a bit about like 2.5 million a year on my trading education. So it's like, you would not, if you don't want to believe me, don't believe me, whatever, it's up to you. If you don't like it, whatever, fuck off. I'm just telling you how it is. The same thing with Bybit. If, you, if I were to tell you how much money I'm making per month on Bybit, this is the amount of money per week that you would say that, you know what, I just retire my entire family and probably three generations to come just only on the commissions I make on Bybit a week. You, you, would, not, you would not believe it. So then how is it that this is happening? Some people cannot afford a home working so much, eight hours a day, and there is some dude sitting in Boljol Arab smoking a shisha, making literally like 300,000 a week sometimes. It depends on the volume and stuff. And I'll tell you how this works. It works through simple zombification. And I will get to the point that I'm just slowly giving the information that I'm going to be coming to the culmination. What you need to understand, what no one understands, is the world cycles. And this is actually, if you've been a bit literate, you know who Ray Dalio is, what is his concept of the changing world order, and I will actually suggest you read his book. It's actually called uh, Changing World Order. I would actually suggest you read it. I'm not into books. I hate books. I don't really read much, but one of the books I did read is Ray Dalio and some stuff from Tony Robbins. So not very much, but some of the stuff that I actually found interesting. And what is happening, and now I'm going to be getting a bit more deeper into technical stuff, and then I'm going to sum it all up and give you an answer as to what you need to do in order not to be completely left behind and completely not fuck up your life in the next 2024 and the next, this year and next year. Because what I'm talking about so far, this shit is going to become more and more real. And the actual gap between the rich and the poor will be like it's widening currently. There is almost no middle class left. It's going to be widening at such a speed until we have civil war, just complete destruction, which actually is known by um, these individuals here and a new world order. So what do we have right now? And it's all might seem like conspiracy. Blah, blah, blah. If you don't believe into anything and you live in your small bubble and you trust the government, you, my friend, are an idiot. So if you're not an idiot, please keep listening. So we have uh, different archetypes, according to Ray Dalio, of the big cycles, because oftentimes people look at just small cycles. They look at, you know, the big, even, <laughs> that's quite funny, but the, people don't even look at the cycles of Bitcoin. If you go to the weekly chart on Bitcoin, you will quickly realize that it's all cyclical. Look, it goes up, it goes down. Let's put on logarithmic. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. It will keep happening because of the monetary system of Bitcoin. That's how it's built. There are cycles. And there are cycles both in these, like th this is a micro cycle. This is a very small cycle. And then there are big cycles, like mega cycles. And people are so stupid these days, they don't even pay attention to these tiny cycles, let alone the big cycles in the world. So the tiny cycle, like, tell me in the comments, how many of you have noticed that people, what do they do? They buy Bitcoin here, then they sell it here. They say, oh, it's a Ponzi scheme. It's garbage. Then they buy it here saying that, oh, it's amazing. Then it goes into the correction. They sell it here. They say it's all a scam. It's all a rug pull. It's a scam. No, it's a scam. Then they will start buying it again here. When we go to 100,000, whatever, they were going to buy a lot here. Then we're going to correct to 60,000, 80,000, whatever the correction is going to go down to. They're going to again lose money. They will call it a scam. So people are so blind, so stupid. Unbelievable. All they know to do is to buy some Louis Vuitton with their credit card. That's all they know. 
and let alone big cycles. So these are tiny cycles. And they're like, I've been playing on these cycles and I've made millions of dollars in front of you. I bought half a million dollars worth of Bitcoin right here. Right now, this position alone is worth 2.5 million, $2 million on this small move by one move. Understanding that, okay, maybe we can go a bit lower. In that video, I mentioned it. We could go a bit lower. Fuck it, whatever. Fuck it. But I knew it's going to go up because it's all cycles. It's all liquidity. Unless we say, see a global ban of Bitcoin. So not to understand this, you have to be stupid. And people don't pay any attention to anything. Then they lose and then they complain. And then they say, oh, the world is so unfair. No, my friend, it's not unfair. You're just stupid. So that's why, not to be stupid, watch my content. Subscribe and hit the notification. I'm just going to be giving it to you straight up. No sugar coating, no blah blah, but actual real fucking facts. So, next thing, um, yeah, what I wanted to mention here is if you look at the archetypes of any mega cycles, so mega cycles are basically the economical cycle, and for the most part, it's this. So, these are the large cycles. Usually, they transpire in the time frame of about 100 years, give or take 120 years. So, and it's more about empires, uh, world reserve currencies, and who has been at the top and who has been the king. So we've all, we, actually, we've often seen China being very powerful, but in the last 500 years it's been um, reduced, but now it's coming back. And we're going to talk, it's like it's also about the BRICS nations, it's also about Russia, China, and also about uh, Brazil, and also Middle East in a way, and like this whole entire coalition against the United States and the dollar. So, and what we are seeing usually in these mega cycles, we see a huge powerful nation come to power through one simple system. And we've seen Netherlands, like it was China, then Netherlands, then uh, UK, then the United States. Now China is catching up again. So, and then we also saw other ones in the meantime in Spain and Japan and Russia, Germany and uh, France, like small ones and Ottoman Empire previously. So, and what we can learn from this is the following. Uh, how it all, like, we're going to come back to this. I wanted to find actually how it all transpires. Okay, well, I can just tell you. I don't know where that chart is. So, usually, how this all transpires is very simple. And I will just give you a brief overview. And I know that some of this stuff might be a bit complicated, but please watch it. This is like, if you don't understand these things, you're lost. You're absolutely lost. And like, it is going to be very complicated for you to dig yourself out. Uh, yeah, so usually, uh, and it also is, it can be applicable to regular human generations and families. Why there is, and it's also a good metaphor, and that's actually how I'm going to be raising my children, keeping this in mind, because everything is cyclical. It's not just the government or Bitcoin or the world's economy or politics or everything is cyclical. It's just the spiral of life. And and this is actually something that I always wanted to share these things because when again, the point I was trying to make also with Instagram is that when you look at my Instagram, you don't really get much except for maybe motivation, proof that I'm rich and almighty and that you should learn from me. But I'm not really opening up because I can only open up here in these occasional streams and actually speak my mind and say the things that I see and just honestly share with you guys and communicate with you guys. Because on Instagram, I can only post some funny real stories one minute long. And if it's like three minutes, nobody's fucking watching it because it's too long. People's brains are so degenerate right now that they need more and like they keep scrolling, scrolling. If something is three minutes, God forbid, they need to look at stupid kittens that do meow. That's all, all they want. Because their brain is already programmed that they need dopamine, dopamine, dopamine. They cannot, they have all ge genetical ADHD. And even I have it sometimes. I realize sometimes I'm in TikTok and I realize how stupid I am. So that's why I cannot really open up to you guys on Instagram. I just can't. That's why I'm trying to open up here. And that's why there is a misconception of Thomas Crowley, this rich, rich prick that shows this crazy lifestyle. But in reality, I'm quite a deep person. People who meet me in real life and have a one hour conversation with me about quantum physics, for example, they're like, what the fuck? Like, who is this guy? Like, I've never thought you'd be who you are. Like on Instagram, you're one thing. And then in real life, you're completely different. So that's why I'm, I want to be doing more of these live streams outside of treating itself uh, and just, you know, sharing my life's insights, uh, even though I'm not 
uh, you know, Gandhi or, you know, I'm not, I haven't been alive for a hundred years. I'm not that wise, but at least something I can share with you guys. So, um, that being said, what usually happens in the cycles, and that's how I want to be raising my children in the understanding of this. Usually, why do you see so many people when they inherit a big amount of money, unless they were raised in a particular smart way, they have a tendency of losing that money by the third generation, fourth generation. And usually that happens because, you know, for example, me, I'm from a poor family, from like lower middle class. My mother, like my whole entire family tree has been really peasants. Like I always use the word peasants, but I, I stem from peasants. I'm the first millionaire in my family tree, the first one. My mother made some money, but she was like lower middle class. She did her best, but she had no education, no understanding of anything, and she just did her best. And uh, my father left when I was two years old. It was a shit show. It was no fun. Like my childhood was a bit weird and a bit stressful in a way. So uh, therefore, I'm hungry. My mother raised me saying that, Thomas, you're a fucking man. You need to put, you, you need to do, like, she didn't even know what to tell me. She's like, live in the United States, live in New York. That's where I grew up, basically. This is where I learned how to make money and how like, how to actually be self-sufficient. At the age of 16, I was already self-sufficient, 18, 17. So I had to, because I was what? Hungry. I needed to fucking physically eat. I needed to pay for school, for my living. I was living alone in New York at the age of 16 and 17. Like, don't ask me how. Maybe it's a separate story for a stream, uh, like my entire life story. It's pretty epic. It's like I look back to it. I was like, holy shit, this is crazy story. So and I was hungry. So I was building it. And like I keep going till this day. I work every day, 24 seven, 24 seven. Like I'm on it. I'm zoomed in. I'm just fucking going, even though I can retire. Guys, I can stop doing anything. I can sh switch off this live stream with the cash flow I have. I make millions per year at my age. I can travel the world, drive any car with the money I have. I can buy myself any Bugatti I want, any villa, I, almost any villa I want, fly private jets, and that's it, halas. But I have a very big ambition, very big thing I'm building right now. And um, the reason why I still don't have a Bugatti because I'm building something right now, which is costing me crazy amounts of money. We have a big team that I'm sponsoring right now. And uh, I'm going to discuss it later also in the stream, possibly. So that's why you're not seeing a Bugatti in my <laughs> Instagram yet, because I'm very careful with my spending. So, and I understand like this psychology led me to building what I've built so far. But I know one simple thing. If I bring up my children in a wrong way, like, yeah, guys, you can have whatever you want. You have this, have that. Yeah, just go get yourself good education. Uh, go to Harvard. I'll pay for it. You know, if you're stupid, I'll just put in some endowment so that Harvard will still put you in. You know, maybe I'll sponsor some, uh, you know, new block in some building. And you'd, it actually happens. I have some contacts in Harvard. It, it actually is possible. So it's all fucking corrupt. It's all corruption everywhere. So I can put them into Harvard and, you know, they will have a good job and like whatever. But with this approach, what will happen? Within maybe a few generations, they will lose everything. They will lose everything I've built unless I teach them to be hungry. Unless I teach them that actually you need to have hunger for the next level, for the next step, for the next conquering of the next challenge. If I don't bring them up in hunger, not physical hunger, but emotional hunger, then they will actually, they will not compete. They will stop competing because fuck it, I can be in San Tropez, I can do a line of coke, I can have a fucky fucky with some beautiful cheeky cheeky and halas. You know, you don't need anything else. And that's how families lose competitiveness. This is how they blow their generational wealth. And these cycles actually are absolutely the same in the governments. And if you go to uh, this chart, what the fuck? Yeah, this chart right here, why, for example, China couldn't stay strong? Why? Holland, Netherlands didn't stay strong. Why did it go down? Why? Why? What is the reason? And guys, the reason is in particular what I've just described. What happens normally, and I've just sadly, there is no... Ah, yeah, okay. So you can actually see it's, it's a bit more complex. So this is the chart right here about trade, military strengths, uh, education, innovation, blah, blah. So I'll just break it down to you in very simple layman terms. So in these uh, time periods, for example, Netherlands, how did UK overtake Netherlands? In a very simple way. What happened was that Netherlands 
there actually at some point in like 1600s, 1700s, Netherlands and the Dutch, they accounted for like 25% of all global, it's a small country, remember, Holland is small, so uh, they accounted for 25% of all inventions in the world. It's insane. And they also invented ships. So when they invented ships, they were able to travel, conquer lands, and actually conquer riches, and it was a huge thing. They were very advanced, their education was very high, and they became rich. And then with time and generations, people start to do what? As I said, nothing, because they're rich. They're all emperors, empresses, they all drink, they all fuck, they all do nothing. They stagnate. And when stagnation starts to happen, this is when education starts to go down. And this is when we have a rise of another power coming along that, that actually is hungry because it was hungry. And this is the black line here. So United Kingdom actually started coming along. Why do I keep switching it to the wrong one? So this is where United Kingdom started coming along. They started pitching uh, shipbuilders from Holland, from Netherlands. And that's how they built an even bigger amount of ships and started traveling, and they just overtook Holland. And the same thing, then United Kingdom also became almighty, powerful. The pound became the reserve, uh, world reserve currency, and usually the reserve currency is the, one, the last one to fall. First, the education, then productiveness, then whatever, something else, and then the actual economy and uh, uh, the actual reserve currency takes a shit because of the same reasons. It's stupidity. Corruption, greed, uh, huge distortion, big wealth gaps, and at the end of the day, the inflation, money printing, it's always the same. Every single currency has collapsed for the same fucking reasons, always, without a single exception. And same thing, like uh, United Kingdom came to power, then they all just became lazy and drunks and whatever. Then United States came along and became the thing. And right now, we are on the brink of the next change. This could happen in the next five years, 10 years, 20 years. It's very difficult to predict it precisely, as Ray Dalio says, but uh, it is happening because United States is already at the decline. So the current superpower is at a very strong decline. We see it by incredible money printing, insane inflation, huge distortion, huge conflicts, global conflicts, huge emergence of counterpower, which is China in this instance. So, and usually this comes uh, at a very, you know, unusual time and very, very unprecedented time that people are not even expecting it. Most of you, I don't know if some of you understand and know all of these things already, congratulations, you are in the 1%. 99% of people don't understand this because it has never happened in their life. They all live in greatness and beauty and whatever. They're like, oh, yeah, it's going to continue like this. We're going to keep printing money forever. Ah. No, this shit is going to crumble and it is already crumbling. So those who are not paying attention now will be left far behind, will go so deep into poverty beyond belief. So that's why I watched the stream till the end. So anyway, and for now, we're saying that China is catching up. United States is a decline. How long it's going to take? No one knows. But this is very important to understand these things. Because what we are saying right now, actually, also, let me try to pull this up uh, on X. Um, and I'm, I'm getting to the point in just a second, I promise. These general cycles also affect different assets. So now I'm getting to what actually matters. Mm, beautiful. This is what we want. I found it. So this is the beauty. This one right here. So this is the comparison between the gold ETF and the Bitcoin ETF. Right now we are seeing huge outflows from the gold ETF which just shows that people are starting to realize that gold is a piece of shit. And this is the first thing you need to learn. And the first thing you need to understand. I actually just found a cover to the book you should really read. Uh, there are assets that are just going out of fashion and that will not produce any return. And a lot of people who are just too ignorant, too stupid, too lazy, too scared, too uneducated, they will sit on those assets and they will just lose money. Because right now, the global economy is developing at such a rate, there is so much money printing. And guess what? Once Fed finally pivots and they will 
pivot at some point this year, they will start printing even more money. And we already are adding more than $1 trillion of debt every month. Guys, it used to be that it took a trillion dollars to bail, bail out a recession. We had, it took a Fed $1 trillion to bail out the US government in the US economy in 2008 and nine. Right now, a, a trillion dollars is just a small uh, treasury deficit. A tiny one, fuck it, who cares, right? This is how ridiculous it is. And what we are seeing right now is also a huge shift in momentum in terms of the assets being kept in certain asset classes. And if you m actually miss this entire momentum, this is what I'm telling all my clients in the hedge fund as well, that if you miss this momentum shift, you will lose a crazy, crazy amount of money. Remember, what is currently the average? Tell me in the comments, who knows? What is the current average uh, inflation rate a year? Like real inflation, not this bullshit numbers that they show you, the real inflation. The real inflation is about 10%. So people who are keeping their money in garbage assets, such as real estate, gold, currencies are stupid and they will lose everything. Because even if you think about it, like in the US, you, you have a house in California, let's say it's worth a million dollars, your dad bought it, whatever, you have a, you have a house, it's worth a million, uh, you pay about 2% um, tax on it per year. So in the next 50 years, you will pay another value of this house to the government. How is this not a robbery? How is this not a scam? And what are you provided in return? What? You're provided a fiat currency that is being devalued by the same government every fucking day. How is this not a scam? How do people don't understand that anything in the world of assets that does not produce a median return of about 10% is just utopia. So if you think about it, if you have an average inflation rate of 10% a year, and for example, you have a house that is worth a million and you're renting it out and you're making 10% 10% uh, rent a year, and basically inflation is 2%, so you already are getting 8%. Minus this, you know, you need to fix shit up and this and that, so you're down to 6%. So and then you need to pay fucking taxes on your income from rent, you're down to like, what, 4%. When real inflation is 10%, so you're down 6%, motherfucker. Why, what, what's in your mind? What is here? Is it empty? It's stupid. Our governments, they want you to own a house. They want you to own a car. They want you to have a credit card and preferably the bigger, the better. So you can borrow more on shit you cannot afford. And that's, that's how we end up making Bernard Arnold the richest man in the world for a brief while until Elon Musk and Jeff Bezos overtook him again. That's what they want from you. Because why? And this is gonna sound crazy. This is gonna like so many of you will not like it, but I don't give a fuck. So we used to have different ways of controlling people. Dictators oftentimes used fear because fear is the best way to control people. But in a uh, civilized, you know, countries and civilized era, you cannot really use fear too much, even though the United States still uses it in the ways of war and nuclear power and etc., which is somehow flying under the radar. But anyway, so what they used to do, they needed to control people somehow. And uh, guess what? These people, I, I, I just cannot call them anything else but uh, the word people. And these are these ones that we discussed. Let's not keep uh, calling their names. So what they want you to do, they, they actually, what, they don't want to do anything. They want to control you, but their control is currently slipping out of their hands. Why is it slipping? What has been, who knows, tell me in the comments, who knows what was the biggest arm of control over humankind in the recent 100 years, 200 years, 300 years, and even the recent 500 years, and even before. What has it been? What do you think is the primary driver of influence and power over people outside the concept of fear? And I will tell you what it is. It's religion. So people, you know, Catholics and uh, Muslims and Buddhists and this, and just full disclosure, I'm not against religion. I am also quite spiritual. I believe in higher power. I don't necessarily maybe believe in Jesus Christ or Allah, but I respect religions. I respect people who are faithful, who are believers. It's fine. But I, what I don't like 
is brainwashing and using this human created concept and let's be frank and let's be honest religion is human created it was created by people to control people look into the history you don't need to go far away you don't need to scream at me you need to just look into history you need to educate yourself a little bit and then you will understand the following that the religion has been used to strong arm people the church used to collect taxes so the church used to execute people the church has been this powerful entity who actually has been controlling the masses don't do this don't do that you will go to hell or if you don't go to hell we will chop off your fucking head ourselves this is how it's been it's not that aggressive anymore because you know we're kind of civilized right we cannot chop people heads off unless it's the muslim world then it's a bit different so still it is quite radical in different places uh, and they understand that the current control is slipping away it is slipping away they cannot people are becoming smarter people are becoming a bit intelligent people are becoming they're starting to question things they're starting to question who is this guy in the bible what does it all mean right now there is a record level of atheism and not because religion is bad but because how it was used not everybody in the religion is bad but a lot of the use of the religion has been very negative people have become billionaires on religion or like mother teresa that made people suffer and was flying in fucking private jets while people were dying in her institutions because they didn't even have fucking penicillin or like even painkillers people were dying from pain while that fucker was on a fucking private jet is this the world you're living in right now and you're looking oh mother teresa did you know what she did she did some good stuff or again marketing she was a genius marketing individual same thing vatican there's so many things you're doing and i'm still surprised my youtube didn't glitch and shut off but what they are realizing that the control is slipping people are waking up less and less people are going to churches on sundays because they're waking up somehow it is a general like collective cognitive awakening that is happening and the big powers and the octopus doesn't like to have its power slip so how can they control people well the new way of control friends is nothing other than instagram and this way of life that you need to be rich you need to make money you need to look ridiculous and make again where is this guy where was he and make this guy rich and you must be doing all of this while your survey actual saving rate is at the bottom because what money guess what money is power because if you ain't got no fucking money it's leverage you can be leveraged like a little bitch when you don't have any money because the government is going to tell you stay in this line go into that line bark flip stay quiet quiet this is what the government is doing because you're a little bitch you cannot do anything you cannot say a you i'm gonna be on my own i'm gonna do my own thing and i'm gonna just go out into the world and be free for that you need money for that you need power and power is money so they are taking it away they're trying to suppress all the information out there for what is currently happening and what kind of a squeeze there is coming around the corner when it comes to uh, for example, like it's, it's, it's happening so quietly. This thing is happening so quietly. This thing is happening so quietly. This thing is happening so quietly. Smart people are pulling their money out of stupid assets that make no sense, but they keep saying, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keep buying gold. Gold is amazing. Oh, it's great. But, you know, for now, we'll pull out a bit of money. Like Warren Buffett is sitting on so much cash right now. Why? Why is it? Why is Warren Buffett is sitting on so much cash? if it's so bad why is the u.s government not selling their bitcoin that they seized they I, from what i believe maybe they sold them but they didn't sell it at the same day they were sitting on it hmm Interesting. is that a coincidence or maybe mr biden who is so senile he, he cannot tie his own fucking shoes so he's like maybe he just forgot you know he's an old man you know he forgot to sell bitcoin is that the case or is there something else around the corner and this is gonna be a conspiracy theory the creator of bitcoin and we are getting to the juice um this now this uh, full disclosure this might be a little bit overly um conspiratorial 
But I don't believe in Satoshi Nakamoto. I don't believe in this bullshit. I don't believe that it's some dude in some fucking mother's basement with autism who was sitting there, you know, eating popcorn and building, uh, writing the Bitcoin white paper. I don't fucking believe it one bit. Because me, like we also, I, one of my companies is basically an IT company. That's a new project we're doing right now that a lot of my money goes into that nobody actually, by the way, still knows about. I haven't spoken about it anywhere because I don't want to speak about it yet. But I, I will start speaking about it slowly here and there. Uh, because I just don't want to be a target yet because it could be putting a big target on my back as to what we want to create because we want to really give people what has been not what has been taken away from them for so long. I really want to tell you what it is, but uh, we'll see. So uh, and what what is happening in general, if you just go back a bit and you step back and you look at the general perspective of things. <laughs> You know, I just want to put it in such simpler layman terms. And actually, you know what? Let's let's quickly have a look at what is happening here. Uh, as you can see, it. no, nothing is happening. Jeez, wait. Oh, when I start talking about these things, I just get so hot because I just feel the pain that the world is in, that people are not realizing like one tiny bit what is happening. And the conspiracy theory itself that I have in my mind, like with this blog, like when we analyzed it with my team, with my IT guys, because I employ a lot of people, I know how the IT work. I'm not an IT specialist myself. I don't really write code, but I understand how some of it works. And I've seen um, how complicated it is to write something that actually works. Bitcoin hasn't been hacked in, what, 15 years? Imagine how many people are trying to hack this multi-trillion dollar crypto industry and they have hacked many things except for Bitcoin. Can you imagine how much brain power and resources would have to go into the creation of something that complicated and that revolutionary? And that's what many people don't understand. According to our personal estimates, it would take a minimum of 50 to 100 very highly skilled IT specialists at least two, maybe three years to create Bitcoin, to create something that complicated. It's not one person, it's not two people, it's not three people. It's 50 to 100 highly skilled specialists to write something like this. So then if you think about it, is there some kind of, so Satoshi Nakamoto was a billionaire who has this kind of financial power to finance and bankroll something like this. Like the project I'm creating right now is far not as complex as Bitcoin, and I'm currently employing 25 IT specialists and uh, I'm paying them high salaries, very high salaries. I'm paying the same salaries as Binance is paying their uh, IT specialists. And I see from the inside how difficult it is and how expensive it is. IT specialists, good ones, are very expensive. So understanding this and understanding that it would take at least 50 to 100 of them. And I can tell you, 100 highly uh, special like highly skilled IT guys, discreet ones, would probably cost you around a million dollars per month in salaries alone. Give or take, give or take. Half a million, a million. So it's, it's not small numbers. So three years, 30 million just in salary. So some Satoshi Nakamoto, don't believe it. I just don't believe it. So and it's also a good thing and a bad thing because then, you know, we don't know who's behind it. And my theory for now, possibly, is the U.S. government, possibly. Maybe one of the corporations that still is tied to the U.S. government, maybe CIA, maybe a colla like some joint effort between Mossad and CIA or something like this. You know, I could be wrong. I haven't been standing there holding the fucking candle. But what I know for sure that it's not Satoshi Nakamoto. Maybe it is some you know, some name of the organization, Satoshi Nakamoto, maybe, maybe it is the US government. But what I think could be happening is that these guys understand what is happening right now. They understand these things right here. They understand that the dollar is fucked, that the dollar is just like any other reserve currency. If it's British pound, if it's the Deutsche Mark at some point, if it is whatever, that it's all going to take a shit. And once it takes a shit, the government loses power the global influence. So and they know that the dollar is unfixable. So they need to fix they need to keep people occupied with bull. like even I think at the, during the Roman Empire, what the Caesars and all these leaders what they said, 
initially why did they actually create the gladiator like you know i remember all these like coliseum and the gladiators fighting each other blood spilling all over the place why did they do it it was not marketing it was entertainment because when stupid human beings mind is occupied by something it is a lot easier to actually manipulate human beings because when people are bored when they're not given you know some show and a little bit of food to fuck off people start to question things people start to grow they start to be more with themselves and they start to think finally and this is where the problems start to arise because they start to question the leaders the power the renaissance the actual enlightenment concepts and more philosophers get born more ideologies get born that does, do not align with the current leadership philosophies so and the same thing is happening right now we are so we have TikTok, we have this we have that people are so occupied with their bullshit. and when people are poor and they're keeping people poor on purpose and just creating this wealth gap and also a part of this whole demise of any global reserve currency is the actual huge uh, increase in the gap between the rich and the poor so that the poor have no voice because they have no money they have no power and they're too busy watching super bowl jerking off smoking weed and just basically doing nothing but trying to make their ends meet they don't have any time but saying oh trump is an idiot or biden is an idiot and just eating a hot dog in the process like the fucking useless just useless so understanding this they also like my theory is that they understand that the united states is at the decline right now china could be catching up the dollar itself is unfixable so and then we and they understood this i think long ago they i think they understood this when nixon president nixon took off the dollar off of the gold standard when basically this is the day when the dollar became a fiat currency that we have today and it just became a scam it just became a pyramid scheme like people call bitcoin a pyramid scheme when the real pyramid scheme is the dollar so it's just a fact like any my, uh, macro uh, analyst or like an economist will tell you that uh, the dollar fits all criteria for a pyramid scheme so and it's just a fucking fact this is just ridiculous like how people are so brainwashed some people are just so stupid that they're like oh thomas but it's issued by the government therefore it's not a pyramid scheme like who cares whom it's issued by if it's a pyramid scheme like you're whole you're holding ten dollars like i don't have any cash here you're holding ten dollars i don't know wait um no i don't have any dollars happily 99 percent of my wealth is in crypto so fuck it so when you're holding twenty dollars and then tomorrow the government comes out and they print another trillion dollars two trillion dollars whatever because they have deficits they don't have enough money they're making less money like the GDP itself basically like they take in less money than then they are spending like if me or you we would be doing the same thing we would be what exactly bankrupt the government would come to us knock on the door and saying that listen here is your tail I'll take your house I'll take your cars and go live on a street because you're a moron and you're bankrupt but the government is somehow they keep going they keep going because they're the biggest power they can tell you fuck off shut up sit there quiet put on a mask quiet stupidest thing ever masks during like i still see some idiots who are till this day wearing masks like if i see a person with a mask on their face i know he's a slave like i don't want to sound like andrew tate is a fact you're an idiot because if you think that a mask is going to protect you from bacteria that is in the air you're an idiot <sighs> anyway so and this is how the entire system is built and people are so blind to it so what could be happening if you know maybe bit just maybe I don't know what the probability is like at this point we're going into the rabbit hole of unknown uh maybe Bitcoin actually has been the creation of the U.S. government and that could explain why we got the Bitcoin ETF that Gary Ginsler gave up I was in a way a bit surprised I mean according to, according to the laws they, but if they wanted to, they would suppress it. They would have killed it long ago. They are playing dumb, like, oh, no, you know, Gary. Gary, please make it very complicated for us. Let's not make it very easy. It's going to be too fucking obvious. This is how I looked at it. And Gary Gensler just being that puppet, you know, just the puppet moving to the moves of the puppeteer. So, and then finally we got it. So no surprise, like China tried banning it. But now they opened up to it because they understand that the US is not following suit and maybe China was like, motherfuckers, what if they are actually the creators? Like, we will never know these kinds of things. I don't know it this deep. I hope I did. But uh, yeah, this kind of information, this is something you can die for in literal sense. So, 
And therefore, considering this, considering that we have so much FUD from so many different idiots while we're having this thing, and most importantly, we are seeing this, that we're seeing huge outflow from gold that has been such a huge thing, which of course is not going to grow because it's just so big already. It's just unmovable. It's just impractical. It's just, is you cannot pave with it anywhere. It's just, it's just so much worse than Bitcoin in every single literal sense. And it's easier to steal it. It's easier to seize it. It's unmovable. It's impractical. It's heavy. Try to carry a bar of gold uh, from another to another country. You will be probably arrested. It's just very hard. So therefore, smart people, the whole momentum and the shift is moving into the different realm, into the crypto realm. And we are understanding that Bitcoin, of all the things out there, unless it's all just a big rug pull, which there still is a probability of it being, who the fuck knows after all, so maybe it is like a conspiracy theory that the US or they maybe it's all they just all governments together wanted to create it, bring all the sheep into Bitcoin and just rug pull everything and then just control people because they will have all the money and people are poor, you know, and just become slaves. But this is like very, very dark conspiracy. So I think that it's more if one of these two conspiracies would be realistic and true, I think it would be the first one, not the latter one. So the first one would be possible that I actually want to fix the situation with the dollar with Bitcoin. Possibly. I know it might sound crazy and who knows, I don't have the answer to it, but it is possible. In my opinion, the only time when you can position yourself correctly is 2024 and 2025. Not financial advice. You do what you want to do. Me, I'm out of the dollar. If you look at my bank account, I have less than $1 million in my bank account. Maybe 1.2, like maybe maximum a mil. So if you would look at my bank statement, I'm like an average millionaire, like maybe a million in cash. That, that's it, nothing else. Just my reserve in case it all goes down to zero so I wouldn't be poor. Okay, yes, I have a car fleet. I have some watches. So maybe I'll have like 2 million outside of the world of crypto. Everything else, which is 90 something percent, 95 percent, it's all crypto. I pay my uh, employee salaries in crypto, everything crypto. So, and I've accumulated big net worth in crypto because in my opinion that there is no other assets and no other thing like Bitcoin that will ever perform. That is really decentralized. That really gives you true proprietary rights. So, and I think that this, the only way to avoid the same problem that we are seeing here is to actually close up the wealth gap. But the only way to close it up, the only you can close it up. Because if this fight is going to be ongoing and if we really have some of these conspiracy theories being true, you are alone, my friend. You are out there in this wild west all for yourself. The government doesn't give a shit about you. No one gives a shit about you. Only you, your family, your loved ones, and Thomas Crawlow in this sense, because I'm actually telling you this, that this could be the case. So I'm making, because if Bitcoin is the creation of the US government, and this is what they're going to be pumping and trying to maybe somehow back up the dollar in some sense, some mathematical way, at least control Bitcoin that they have. And maybe this 1 million Bitcoin belonging to Satoshi is actually belonging to US government, plus all the Bitcoin that they've seized. So they already are a huge holder. And if Bitcoin is going to be worth millions per Bitcoin, which is mathematically possible with the trillions of dollars of money printing we have now, which is very possible, then they could actually have huge control over it and therefore somehow attempt to sustain the glo their global influence and power, knowing that Bitcoin is going to be the dominant measure of exchange. It's just my theory. So, But if it is the case, you need to be an early adopter of it too. Because otherwise, right now you can still buy it at pennies on the dollar. Pennies on the dollar. So hopefully or not hopefully, I don't know, in my case, hopefully it will be the case that 10 years from today, we'll go back to this live stream, we will watch it again, and I'll be like, I told you so. I don't know if it's going to be the case or not, but we'll see. So, because down the road, when Bitcoin hits $1 million, and if we see like these kinds of accumulations, we already spoke about this, that right now, uh, we see uh, BlackRock and ETFs accumulate on average per day 10,000 Bitcoin. 5,000, whatever. At this rate, there will be no Bitcoin left on exchanges within 12 months. Imagine what's going to happen to the price. It's insane. It's fucking insane. So, and when it goes 
maybe in the next cycle or the cycle after it, when it goes to $1 million, $2 million, which is very possible. Those who think it's impossible have a problem with uh, mathematics because if they just evaluate how much money there is in the world, how much cash is on the sidelines, how much money is actually coming out of assets and going into Bitcoin and crypto, a million dollars per Bitcoin is not impossible. It's not impossible. Not anymore. That's it. Halas. With Bit introduction of Bitcoin ETFs globally, it's no longer impossible. Bitcoin could hit a million dollars even if um, these sovereign wealth funds would actually allocate 3% of their clients' portfolios to Bitcoin. It would already be at a million. That's it. 3% million. Beyond a million. And what if they allocate 10%? What if it's going to be 20%? Who knows? And this is this thing, if it, something didn't, like this is what Ray Dalio is saying. This is what I'm trying to point your attention to. Where is it? Like these things. If something didn't happen in your lifetime, that's the point of Ray Dalio. If something didn't happen in your lifetime, it doesn't mean it hasn't happened before. And it, that, it, that, it, that it's not going to happen in the future. That's a very big misconception. Don't live in your small fucking bubble. Burst out. See, uh -huh, this probability, this probability. Be aware. Simply be aware aware so and that that being said once bitcoin really pumps like we're seeing already the craziest uh, monthly candle ever which is pretty cool um uh, this is like really one of the craziest what the fuck one of the craziest monthly candles we've ever seen one of the biggest ones i think it is the biggest one imagine what happens if we see another three of these another five of these could it happen possible so that then what the closer we go to this absolute possible like monetary maximum of any price of any asset like the gold gold is already at its maximum almost unless we factor in the printing of money then it can still go a bit higher just because of inflation but it's not going to be profitable long term in terms of the value of the money that you're making on it so therefore if you think about this the closer we get to this edge the more impossible it will be for simple people who are making barely their ends meet already to actually keep their ends, uh, actually keeping their ends meet and trying to close this gap. The longer you wait, the further you are from actually finally start closing this gap, which is again, let's go to this picture. This is the gap I'm talking about. The only way to salvation is crypto, despite if Satoshi Nakamoto is some Satoshi Nakamoto or if it's the U.S. government. In any case, that's the only option we have at this point. There is nothing else, like nothing else. So, and all these big players, all these faces, all of them know it, but we just don't know what their plan is. So my plan is to actually follow the lead and just do what we do best and adjust and adapt and build as much money as possible. And this brings me to the topic as to what I'm doing. There was something I wanted to really discuss and then I'm going to come to the comment section. <sighs> Guys, I really want to share something. And I think it's going to be very relevant to those of you who've been following me for quite some time. And it's going to sound very strange, but I want to set something straight. So that at some point when somebody's going to be hating on me on social media, you can actually stand up and uh, write a few words in my defense. All the things you've seen on my Instagram, all the things that you've seen me do over the years, you know, like uh, all these crazy videos and content and uh, marketing. And is it really me? Like you, you might remember the time when I actually had... Um, let me see if I can actually go back to it. Uh, maybe you remember the time uh, when I was driving a ridiculous Golden Rolls Royce. Where is it? Let me pull it up. Uh, if I go to the history of my posts, I remember people were giving me so much hate and they're saying, oh, it is so fucking ugly. You're so distasteful, blah, blah, blah. Um, or is it? I just have to find it. It's so. It was so funny, and I will just make my point real quick. Ah, oh, yeah, there it is. This is uh, the edge of my Rolls Royce. Or is it? A lot of crazy funny content. Like for me, it's funny because I know the reason why I've been creating it, and I really want to. Like here it is. I also had. We've been riding. I had a golden Rolls Royce Phantom, and also a golden G Class. Uh, and we were like riding them one like my uh, assistant like was riding behind me and we would ride in two golden cars I had a picture of both of them 
Like, I mean, I got rid of them because they were just, even for me, they were just too fucking much. I just couldn't take it because they were looking like I just made some money yesterday and I'm a gypsy here. Like, look at this content, a bag of money, a golden G, and this is like, what, fucking a year ago, a golden G, uh, a golden Rolls Royce Phantom. It is pretty ridiculous. But now let me share something I've never shared uh, ever before in my entire life on social media. Did I really get myself a golden Rolls Royce Phantom because I thought I really want one because I really liked one? No, I fucking hated it. I'll be honest, I fucking hated it. I hated it to my like, at some point it was a bit cool, it was funny, but I felt so uncomfortable driving it. But I did it for one simple reason, marketing. I wanted to attract attention and it worked. It worked brilliantly. I connected to so many influential people in crypto and I became friends with them because they would just call me and they would say, listen, this is so cool. Wow, let's connect. It just, I, I met a few billionaires because of my golden Rolls Royce Phantom. They were like, dude, you're crazy. Fuck it, let's meet up. Like, it's that crazy. I built insane influence and insane connections in this industry. Plus, I built a lot of followers. And uh, the reason, like, even all the like, crazy watches recently, I bought myself a Richard Mille, which is like, at the peak, it will be like a half a million dollar watch. All these things, do you think I really wear it much in the daily life? I'll be honest, no. Like, if you meet me on the street, I'll be wearing some simple... <sighs> Here. Actually, here are my pants. This is what I oftentimes just walk around uh, during the evening when I do my steps. I look like a regular dude, unless like I go to some fucking restaurant or something where people will see me, then I will be looking ridiculous because I need to, because it's marketing. But in reality, the reason why I did it, because I was trying to attract as much attention as possible because I have a, I've had a plan all along. I had a plan for many years uh, since I was a trader. I've been, I've been a trader for like 10 years. I've been together with my wife for about seven years now. We've been married for almost four years. We have an incredible relationship, a very beautiful relationship. And she brought me to social media because she initially, she knew the idea that I had. She knew it from day one um, because I've been, I, I knew all the, a lot of the stuff I discussed today, I, I knew it for many years. Like I've been monitoring it for many years. And one of the things that I wanted to do was try to give people the resource to build, to close this gap, to actually be able to overtake inflation, to actually have this American dream type of a life. And I, I, I attempted to do this. I had a big dream. I knew that the, build, the project I'm building right now, uh, a lot of my money is going into it. And like, I mean, I showed you guys, like even once I showed you one of my wallets, with like $7 million in cash in it. And I have many of those wallets, like right now I probably have in liquid cash, like where something I could liquidate very fast, more than $30 million. So, and a lot of that money is going into the project that I think will actually revolutionize the world of finance. And actually, and it's not gonna be some fucking, you know, I'm not gonna try to, you know, create a coin some and then just force it down your throat. Possibly there will be our own blockchain, but for different reasons, for actually mechanical reasons. And uh, we're not even going to be raising any money for it. We are not raising any money for the project. I really, the reason why I was doing all this, these, all these years is because I wanted to create a resource that actually would help people, not in a way of trying to sell subscriptions or courses, nothing like this. What I've realized long ago that one of the main reasons why there is a big discrepancy between poor and rich and why this gap is growing outside of the facts I've mentioned during this stream is because that the rich don't give the poor a single fucking chance to do anything. Not a single chance. Like, look at it. Like, who has all the information in this world? Like, uh, the world of money. It's BlackRock, Larry Finn, it's VEF, Klaus Schwab, Schmab, like whatever, it's uh, Goldman Sachs, Berkshire Hathaway, big hedge funds, pension funds, like all these big money, big money players, Vanguard, Fidelity. And guess what? They can onboard you, they can manage your money, and they can make you actually successful because they are the ones controlling the market. They're the ones moving the market. They are the market makers. So uh, when you invest with them, 
you actually are in very good hands and your family is in good hands and uh, you can be sure that they will survive any cataclysm because they are the ones fucking creating them, arguably. So, and if you diversify among them, you will be fine. But there is one but. Poor people or even middle class people or even semi-rich people are left out. Because guess what? Uh, one of my advisors in one of my uh, funds is actually was ex Goldman, and he told me a lot of interesting things, like the shit I couldn't believe. So um, he told me that these big players they understand everything I've mentioned during this stream, and they want to see it because of the dispersion of power, so to speak. And there is also a very good reason why none of those things are available to the poor. So if you wanted to come to one of these companies and say, listen, guys, I understand that you know better than I. Uh, here is my money. Please make my family at least overtake inflation and let me just have a chance at this life and not get fucked by the dollar, etc. They'll be OK, fine. They will do it for you. But only in one case, unless you bring them a minimum of 50 million dollars, they won't even go on a call with you. They won't even talk to you. Some funds out there, like Jeffrey Epstein's fund, for example, it's a bad example right now, I know, but he wouldn't take anything less than $1 billion. Like imagine how many people out there in the world can put in a minimum $1 billion. There is not too many. There is a few, but not too many. So the power of proper asset management has been always reserved for the super rich, not just the rich, super rich, ultra high net worth. So that's something 25 million and above. And normally, if you can invest 25 million, your net worth is far above 25 million. So your net worth is at least 100 million, 200 million. And this is what has been, these things have been always reserved for those who actually have this kind of financial power. Like me, even me, like I don't have liquidity, like if I would put everything together, maybe I could put together 30 million in cash and come there and then get like 15% a year with Goldman, or maybe sometimes 20%, sometimes 10%, but something that would actually outperform inflation, nothing else. But this has always been reserved for the rich. And trust me, among the, I know so many, I know a few billionaires and I know a few guys who have hundreds of millions. They're so fucking stupid. Like only, they're nice people. <laughs> they're very nice guys, but they're stupid. And they make crazy money. How they make it? Well, they have a few investments that are worth a billion, 1.5 billion, 2 billion. And they're making 10% a year, 12, 15% a year through Goldman Sachs, Berkshire Hathaway, through proper hedge funds that actually move the market, BlackRock. I have friends who have actually investments in BlackRock. So, and they make crazy money. Like imagine if you have 1 billion you've invested and you're making 10% a year, 15%, that's what? 100 million, 150 million? Not bad. And you're, why you're stupid? You don't even need to do anything. You've just invested in them, but this is not available to simple people. All these strategies that they're using, they're a bit more complex than retail degen trading. Yeah, it's, it's a bit different, but it's not that complicated. And all this stuff is actually reserved for the ultra rich. That's why this gap is growing. And my recommendation to you before I move to the comments and uh, speak to you guys, number one, embrace crypto. Get rid of all the shit assets you have, which just are not performing and will not perform. And only this, these big powers want you to be in those assets just because they want you to be in those assets because they want you to be fucking poor. That's it. Nothing else. That's number one. Number two, constant education. Constantly educate yourself. Educate yourself. Please read this book. Please. Because what I've just touched upon in this, in this uh, stream is just the surface. Understand these things. Understand to look outside the box. Because the development of humankind is going into the parabolic curve. And if you are too lazy to do things and just read a bit here and there, pay attention to what is happening, subscribe to my uh, YouTube channel. I'm going to actually keep you updated on all these things. Keep yourself informed. Learn, 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 apply, learn, learn, learn. 24-7, 365. And the last thing. And the last thing is going to be my project that I'm working on, hopefully, because like I'm spending millions on it. That's the reason why I'm still not owning something ridiculous as a uh, small uh, private jet or uh, Bugatti, Shmugatti. I could buy myself fucking five Bugattis and really still have cash left in cash today. 
But I know that uh, if I invested properly into the company I'm building right now, I'll be able to buy Bugatti as a brand, <laughs> not as a car. So this is what I'm trying to work on. And uh, I, I just, I really want to share with you what the idea is, what the concept is and what we are building. But I think that a lot of possibly my enemies and people who could be my competition in this would be watching me right now. So I just cannot disclose it yet. It's a big thing. It's a huge resource that solves three, not one, but three real problems and brings back the rights, three rights of people back to people that have been taken away from the same people by the ones I've been discussing in this entire stream. So that's why I'm betting heavily on it. And if it does play out, you will see my name among billionaires in the next 24 months, give or take 24 months. I either will blow my entire savings on it or I will become a, uh, as a person known to bring to people justice in the financial sense and probably my net worth will be beyond a billion dollars in the next 24 months. We'll see about it, but that's my plan because I understand these things. I understand these mega cycles and I'm preparing to be part of this shift myself in a certain realm that hopefully will come out perfect. So that is what I wanted to share really. Uh, let me go to the comments. Let me just speak to you guys because it was more of a monologue. But uh, anyway, tell me in the comments right now, what do you guys think about everything that I've mentioned? What kind of questions you might have? Hopefully it is somehow useful for you. And our short trade, actually, Bitcoin, uh, yeah, just moving to the side. Let's see what is happening with general portfolio. Yeah, just sitting there doing nothing. So basically 56,000 in profit so far on this challenge, which is, eh, okay. But we'll see what happens. I really want the short trade to play out and then build a long trade a bit lower with some nice leverage and go in possibly with even more into a long, but I'm going to keep you updated about the long. And certainly, I mean, I own a lot of Bitcoin. So I'm actually more interested in it going up right now than down, because if I lose this short trade, I will still make a shit ton of more on just my Bitcoin holding that I have. So that's why exercise proper risk and money management. Never degen into one single trade because you will get wrecked. If you get lucky a few times, it's just luck and then you will get wrecked, guaranteed. So always diversify. I never risk personally more than 1% of my deposit per trade. So never more than 1%. So yeah, let me go to the comments. Oh, that's a very good question. What would you do with a billion? So I have a good plan for, for one. Uh, I would need a lot more money like because right now my buying power is, as I say, like probably around 30 million. So if I would have a billion, I would have, I would need that money to keep expanding the product line inside the ecosystem we're currently building. So I just keep reinvesting it into the ecosystem of the project. And we also want to extend and open up the arm in the world of biotech, because I, as I mentioned before, I believe that the current um, developments in biotech and longevity have huge promise in the next 25 years that we will really be able to prolong life Mo maybe even indefinitely. So it will be immortality, possibly, which is going against religion and stuff, but it's just how it is. The world is relatively binary. So we, as a humankind, should be able to solve it. And as of right now, we actually already know what makes us age uh, and we already know how to stop it. But for now, we are actually still fighting the consequences of stopping it. And like, for example, removing protein P16 from our cells or something actually stops the aging of the cells. But it also stops the actual immune system from fighting cancer. So we die from cancer instead of age. So therefore, uh, yeah, it is quite problematic. So for now, we already know the answers to many questions. The only questions that currently are left is to how to actually avoid side effects from this kind of crazy longevity procedures in biotech. So this is what I think the huge hype will be in the future beyond AI and crypto. The next thing will be time and time in a sense of living longer and selling time. So that's what I want to become a big player in also. And that is what my community get, will get the first hand right to. Uh, and that is the any longevity products that we might come across developing or succeed in actually developing. So that's why I would need billions of dollars, so to speak, because for my life, I already have everything I want. I've, I've tried everything. And the only thing I could do maybe fly on jets more. I like sometimes I fly on a jet, depending on the length of the flight. Sometimes I first fly, I fly first class. Maybe I would want to buy a yacht, live on it, see what it's like, throw up, 
because of the motion sickness, sell it and then just fucking just work and try to provide for my family and the humanity. Uh, is it too late to get into crypto at this point? No, I think it's still early considering everything. Uh, oh, stop bragging. Go suck a dick, please. Just fucking leave if you're a stupid Karen. Uh, what else? What's the title of the book? Uh, Changing World Order. That's an interesting one. Do you recommend living in Dubai? It depends on what you need. Because right now Dubai is also introducing a 9% tax. So actually it is not tax free anymore. As long as you more, make more than a million a year dirham. So that's about almost $300,000 uh, a year. Personally, then you will like outside of the scope of your salary from what I understand. So there is corporate income tax. So eh, it's very good safety wise. It's very clean. It's very safe. It's incredibly safe. Like it's in a sense cheap. Like I don't even insure my car fleet. Like I have basic insurance. I don't need any other insurance like my Aventador GT3 RS, my back, whatever. Like all my cars, I don't even have any full insurance on them because nobody steals them. Nobody does anything because if anyone's going to do anything, the police is so good here that they will be caught in the next five minutes and they're going straight to fucking jail. So there is no, no talks here. You just go to jail. So that's why it's like it's very safe here. So if you really want safety and a good place for having a lot of money, it's beautiful. It's amazing. Yeah. So it depends on what you what you want. Um, will you ever bring your copy trading to Bitget? No, our copy training will be elsewhere. So what is your success here? Well, for one, Forex is garbage. It's like uh, Forex is one of the worst markets out there, even though it's mar the most marketed market. But those who trade Forex, they oftentimes, if they really are professionals at it, they move on to other assets because Forex is just in terms of probabilities is one of the hardest markets to predict because of uh, abrupt volatility that they have because of the nature of the market and also the nature of the market data. There are technical reasons why really professionals Professionals rarely trade Forex unless they just, just bet on the currency long term. That's a bit different. Like all the swing trading in uh, uh, currencies is very difficult. So those who trade Forex, they probably haven't learned that there are actually better markets to trade. But when it comes to my secret to success, there is no secret. There is just, you just pick a direction in life that is the best in your opinion that you really enjoy and that actually has the potential of being the future and you keep going. You keep going, you fail, you keep going, you fail, you keep going, and only then you become the 1%. You become the 1% at the point when the 99% have failed. When they said, ah, fuck it, I give up, I don't understand, it doesn't work, I'll just go flip burgers for, for a living, that's it. So this is the point when you go beyond this threshold of the 99%, you actually break it, you actually make it, you actually gather enough experience in something that you actually become proficient in it, and you actually subsequently become good at it. So that's why I just choose it, hire yourself the best mentor you can, and just keep going. Uh, uh, how do you manage the stress despite having multiple businesses, especially trading? Could you please share some tips about stress management being positive? My friend, this is a beautiful question. And uh, I've struggled with this myself. I had a panic disorder. I had panic attacks. Uh, sometimes I would go all white. I would have my heart beating at 180 uh, beats per minute, just out of nothing, out of nowhere. And uh, I would have terrible anxiety. I couldn't sleep at night. I would have so many thoughts and I would take on so many risks. Like I've risked everything at least three times in my life. Like I would, and I'm doing this fourth time right now. I'm doing it with this new project where I'm ready to invest till the last penny. I swear to God, with the thing I'm doing right now, with the vision I have, with the team I've built, I am going all in. I'm go going all in on two things, on crypto and on uh, my project. And the only thing I would ever sell my Bitcoin for below $300,000 is my project. So if this project takes all of my money, all of my Bitcoin, so be it. So and certainly when you're doing this thing, like, like the way I'm doing it, like I've, building, I've been building a wealth of approximately $30 million in the last 10 years since I was 18, 19, now I'm 29, I'm turning 30 in June. So like having the net worth of like 30 mil, like cash, 
cash real, like something in Bitcoin and this and that that is real, not some company. Like if I calculate all my companies, then it's for more than 30 million. But then this is the question, can you sell these companies? How attached are they to my brand name? And so all this bullshit is very hard to cal calculate. But if you calculate just really tangible shit you can sell today, it's 30 mil. So a lot of people would never risk something. Like they would be too scared to risk it because it's like arguably it's generational wealth. Like it's, it's, it's ultra high net worth. So I don't know if it is, but like in my opinion, it's not. But according to statistical, whatever it is. So when you're risking something like this, like putting all chips on the table, uh, it is complicated. So would I say that I'm living the most stress-free life? <laughs> no, fuck no. But I realized um, through coaching, because I've hired many coaches, like also Rick William is an interesting guy on, on, on Instagram. You can find him, Rick William. I worked with him. Uh, his mentorship costs $75,000 per year. It's crazy. Well, I mean, it's still cheaper than Tony Robbins. Tony Robbins wanted a million dollars from me for personal coaching, a million bucks. I was like, okay, Tony, you know, maybe later, because right now I'm not ready to spend a million on coaching. So, uh, like, some prices are fucking astonishing, but they actually work. Tony Robbins is a good coach. Uh, and uh, Rick William is also an amazing coach, but he was 75,000. So I work with a lot of coaches that I actually open up with people. I gather experience. I do a lot of spirituality. I oftentimes meditate three times a day just to call myself out, to center myself. Because sometimes I have so many things, like literally, I'll be honest with you. Uh, sometimes I'm sitting there, I have so many notifications in my phone. Even now I just received fucking, while I was doing this, I received so many noti- Holy shit. What the fuck is happening in my phone? It was literally upside down for an hour. If I would show you the amount of notes, oh my God, I'm gonna sit at these for another fucking two hours after the stream. So sometimes you look at your phone and you just wanna you just wanna shut out. You you just wanna shut down. You're, you're like a computer, just want to die. I don't know. It's it's insane. The way to deal with this is to let go of any pressures. How to do this? Like, do I care about the material things I have today? If you look at my Instagram, it might seem like I do, but in reality, I don't. I don't. I don't get attached to anything. I don't get attached to my cars, my watches. I don't give a fuck. Do I care about money? No. Not much. I care about it as a uh, instrument, but I just changed my mindset to what it is. Because I remember I used to have this crazy, like this is something that stood in my way when I was a trader, that I was like literally going, I was obsessing about every single dollar that I had. So if I would take a loss on a trade, I would be pissed off beyond belief. I would break keyboards, I broke screens, like I would break these, I would throw them against the fucking wall. Uh, and it was because it's just not a loss. I would be so attached to money because I would see it not as a stop loss, for example. I would see it as a piece of a Rolls Royce rolling away. I would see it as a piece of fucking jewelry, a watch or something levitating away saying goodbye, you're a loser. So I would be so attached to it emotionally that at some point I broke this bond. I broke this attachment that literally if I would lose tomorrow a million dollars, I wouldn't give two shits about it. I would be like, okay, it's a part of the game. I know it's the part of it. And I've lost big money before. I've started some companies that didn't work out. I lost a lot of money at some point. So, and it's fine. Like, you, what you need to understand, like, I also try to ground myself and be very humble about the actual beginnings of the universe, the understanding of insignificance of our entire existence and understanding and it's just one approach. It's just the approach that worked for me. I understand that us, we are levitating on a piece of grain, which is called the planet Earth. And we are going into fucking nowhere. We all think that our problems are so important. A million this, a million that, or paying bills or this. It's all so irrelevant. We still don't know who we are, from where we are, what we are. And we are so insignificant. The entire existence of our universe is insignificant. And some argue in terms of the quantum theory that it all exists and doesn't exist. Parallel universes and all this crazy shit that you realize when you actually go very deep into spirituality, maybe you do psychedelics or like psilocybin, DMT, ayahuasca, which none of which I've done, by the way. I've just achieved certain levels of spiritual state of awakening through meditation and calmness and just centering and I've been working with my spirituality for many years deep meditations very deep practices that led me slowly throughout the years to the state of peace I still flip out sometimes sometimes I want to slap people I want to fucking shoot people sometimes honestly like 
I want to create genocide sometimes. Like I just go, I scream, I fucking yell. I, I don't hit people, but sometimes I want to fucking hit people very hard with my feet, fists and my head up front. So, but generally speaking, I learned throughout the years the power of calmness and uh, just power of spirit. So that actually just keeps me away from emotional breakdown. I don't know if it was helpful, but I did my best. Let me go to the next ones. Oh, that's interesting. Offer me free access. Why would I do it? Why would I give anyone anything for free? Nobody ever gave me anything for free. Like, why? Like so many people are saying, oh, you're rich. You can give me shit for free. And that's also the thing. When you give people shit for free, they don't deserve it. They don't cherish it. We tested it. I actually pick out, picked out people. I donated my education. I donated personal sessions. People were like, oh, they were so thankful. But they gave up the next day because they realized that it's actually fucking difficult. But when they pay for shit with their hard, with their hard earned money, this is when they have better chance of success simply because they paid for it. They have interest in it now. And the same thing for me, like, why would I wake up in the morning? Why would I hire people? Why would I create a product? Why would I do anything for free? Why? I'd rather just go out and fucking, you know, enjoy life. Like, why would I do shit for free? Like the project we are currently working on, it will be a free project. But I mean, it's not going to be like, we're not actually going to be charging money for uh, anything on inside of like the main benefit of it is not going to be like, it's not going to cost any money for people, but it's a different type of a project. It's not an educational project because a project needs to generate cash flow anyway, because nothing can survive without money. And that's what people don't understand is just these people are just stupid. We are not insignificant. Uh, see, it depends on how you look at it. What I meant was on the general universal grade. Like if you look at, do you know how many planet Earths there are in the, in the universe? Like the same planet that has the same solar system, that has the same temperature, the same stratosphere, uh, stratosphere atmosphere, that actually can support the same life, oxygen, everything. There is billions of planets like planet Earth. And we are 8 billion people on one of those planets. And every single one is so important, has problems. Ooh. So in this sense, it's all insignificant that you can actually relax, take a breather. It's not that important. That's what I'm trying to say. Uh, that's a very good question. Is your wife and family supporting you in all you're doing? Absolutely. 100%. Like my wife, I attribute a lot of my success to my wife because not because of the things she did, but maybe because of the things she didn't do. She didn't fuck my brain. She didn't stand in the way of my vision. She actually embraced. I mean, we already, we always aligned in our vision for the future, for the company, for what we want to bring in terms of value to humankind and to ourselves, to our inner close circle and like our family. I mean, our family. And we always aligned so well and my mother and my family in general, I've never had any pushback. But guess what? If I had pushback, I wouldn't be around the people. I would rather be alone, a lone wolf, than around a bunch of fucking degenerates who just push back on everything I say. It's just, is not the way, like you must be happy. First and foremost, you must be a happy human being because if you're unhappy, like this is one of the things I don't agree with Andrew Tate on. He keeps saying, you need to be miserable. You need to keep pushing. Even when your eyes bleed, you need to get up and do shit. It's just wrong, in my opinion. It's certainly, you need to be motivated. You have to have an ego. You have to be strong. All of these things are true. But pushing beyond your fucking human limit and just breaking yourself in the process is stupid. And it's a very, very bad advice. You always need to have a balance. There is no rush. You can relax. You can observe. You can soak up. And then as you go, you actually develop and you succeed. And it's, trust me, 
And I've seen, I've proven this to myself so many times. Whenever I would be going crazy, like anxiety, not sleeping, all the things fall apart because I'm just not focused. I cannot focus. I'm tired and pissed. I'm sad. I'm unhappy. How can I succeed in this state of mind? But when you're calm, when you're in love, in the state of happiness and gratitude, shit comes together. It's easier. It comes with the flow. So it's like it's, 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 it's a slippery slope. And this is a very important thing. So therefore, you must get rid of people who don't support you, who are toxic. Like if ever anybody comes into my life, which rarely happens because I'm very defensive. I don't really become friends very easily because a lot of times, you know, people want something from me. It's, it's, it's a bit challenging. When you're going beyond a certain social level and money level, it becomes quite difficult to be. I have a few very good friends, like people I could trust my life with. And I know that they would do anything for me and I would do anything for them. There's like three people like this in my life and that's it. I don't believe you can have more than a few real friends, real friends, not acquaintances. You can have a hundred people you know, but that's not friends. Real friendship is different. And I am blessed to have a few real friends. And anyone else who comes into my life, and if I feel even slight jealousy or toxicity or anything, they, they fuck off from my life at an instant. I literally, sometimes it has happened before, I would go to a dinner. If I would feel it, I would just stand up. I'd say, thank you very much. And I would leave. I would fuck off. I would just leave. And people would think, oh, he's so fucking important. No, I just value my time. I value my energy. I value my whole entire existence and my energy field than to be among people who just don't resonate with me. So that's very important. And people oftentimes are afraid to switch up. They're afraid to say no to a relationship to a toxic wife, to whatever, like, it's a no-no. It's like, it's huge, but like, you have to be in the best state of energy at all times. So as I said before, I'd rather be alone than in the in a bad field, in among bad friends, bad colleagues, bad family. If it's a mother, father, it doesn't matter, fuck off. So, and I was just blessed that all people around me, my best friends, my family, they have never changed when I was poor, when I was rich. They didn't change. I'm very blessed. I'm very happy. And if they did, uh, they, they would fuck off very fast. What do you think about Solana? I think that Solana is going to pump just because of the community, but the project itself is a piece of shit. Like there are so many other projects that do the same and they do it better than Solana and they don't crash in the process and they actually have real TVL and etc. I've done a video on Solana. I think that they have a big part of it. Like in crypto, there is oftentimes no correlation between actual fundamental value and quality of a code or whatever and the pump. When there is a narrative and pump and community, even a piece of shit that is empty, like a meme coin, like Pepe Schmepe, can pump to the fucking skies. So technically and fundamentally, Solana is garbage. But will it pump? Yes. Do I still have it part of my portfolio? Actually, yes. But I don't have a big amount of it. Actually, let me check. It's actually a good question, Solana. Let me check if I have it in my... Which, which wallet did I have it in? Maybe I can find it. Uh, uh, yeah, I think it's here. Oh, yeah, well, just to prove the point that actually, even though I don't like Solana, and I've said it so many times, I actually still hold it. Just let, me, let me prove it. Um, actually, you know what, present slides, actually, camera. So, stop screen, prevent, blah, blah, blah. Uh, oh, here it is. Jesus Christ. So this is the one of my wallets. This is my uh, one of my reserve ones. Uh, and here, Jesus fucking Christ, here. So here is Solana. So I have it. I've held it for so long. I just, I have like 258 so soul. So that's like $35,000 worth of it. Same thing with XRP and Chainlink and Cosmos. Well, Cosmos is much more fundamental than Solana, and I think it's going to pump like crazy. Cardano, Stellar, BNB, Dogecoin, BitTorrent, Uniswap, Polygon. But that's one of my like reserve ones, the ones I just keep for for eternity. So, uh, yeah. So I still have it. It's just that I don't really believe it as a project itself. I don't really believe in the fundamental value of it, like, at all. Um, 
let me add the screen back. Let me put this one back on here. What else? Um, also, actually, the same thing about XRP. In general, it's not the best coin, it's not the best utility, but community is huge and it was suppressed by second, the previous uh, bull run. So in this bull run, it could just perform really well, just based on narrative. That's about it. That's why I hold a bit of it. Uh, let's see. That's a good one. Since when uh, did you say go to full cricket? So the impulse was when I read the Bitcoin white paper. I didn't read the whole thing because I also have ADHD. It's like too complicated. But uh, I understood what it is. I understood what kind of issues it really solves. Because remember, for something to become very valuable, it really needs to solve problems. And I realized that one of the biggest problems we currently have is the current reserve currency, which is the dollar, the current outdated colonial fiat system that we have. So I understood all these things very fast. And I saw Bitcoin, understood what it does. I was like, fuck. And then I watched some uh, interviews with Michael Saylor and I was like, fuck. So and that was the moment I was like, OK, this shit either goes to zero or to a million dollars. As simple as really, it's Michael Saylor is right. Even though, even though he's a Bitcoin maxi, but he's so right about every fucking thing he says. And this was, was my trigger. So that was, I read it in about like 2018, 19. I put together my first portfolio. I did 2000%. I did 20x in the previous bull run. Sadly, it was not on millions and millions of dollars that I hold in crypto these days. But it was still good. And I was like, holy shit. So this was just my trigger. And it was since 2019 and 18. So... Some of my friends were trying to break, uh, bring me into it before, and I was trading at the time like uh, futures on docs and indices in traditional market and stocks, and I was just an idiot to be honest. Uh, Shiba, do I, do I have Shiba? No, I don't have any Shiba. Maybe I do, maybe a little bit, I don't know. Uh, What else? Let me find something interesting. What's a good cold wallet for noobs? I think that a really good one. I still use Ledger a lot, but I'm just not updating it to this stupid fucking feature they have with the cloud where they store your seed phrases in the cloud. I don't do that, so I don't update it to that version. So I just use the previous version and I will never let them keep the anything in the fucking cloud. So Ledger, if unless you use that service, it's okay. And also Trezor. Trezor is good. I think it probably is even safer than Ledger. So Trezor, Ledger. <laughs> Everybody's always bothered by my teeth. Uh, actually, not that very much because I actually have I have lumineers. I don't have veneers. I have lumineers, and it's like it's like the piece that goes onto your existing teeth without actually cutting your existing teeth, which is stupid. People who cut their teeth are fucking morons because these days there is a thing called lumineers, where they just measure your teeth, they put them on top of your existing teeth, and it takes half an hour. And I paid. $1,500. Look, it's fucking perfect. And if I wanted to, I can take them off and my original teeth will be there. That's it. $1,500, half an hour. When people fly to Turkey, spend thousands and thousands and thousands, shave off their existing teeth, fucking imbeciles, and then complain, huge pain, huge discomfort. Stupid. Just stupid. Remember, lumineers, not veneers. Veneers is stupidity. Lumineers. Uh, what technique you use for meditation? Actually, different ones. Very, very different ones. It's like it's a different fucking stream on this topic. So, is there a buy or like a real money? So this up to 30K, uh, it is real. I mean, a lot of my uh, friends claimed the bonus. It is uh, for like uh, leverage trade, so for derivatives. 
but they have like obviously nobody's gonna give you 30k for free so there is like threshold that you need to deposit i think it was a few hundred thousand that you need to deposit plus you need to have a trading volume then you need to apply for it and you really can get 30k in bonuses which you cannot withdraw but you can trade with it and then all your profits you can withdraw so don't expect that you will deposit 20 dollar and get thirty thousand dollar for free How do you handle stress? Uh, I work out. I spend quality time with my family. I uh, try to work on my spirituality. I travel a lot. I have some fun here and there, but I don't do drugs. I don't do alcohol. I don't smoke cigarettes. Nothing like that. I just, I, I would probably say that the things and the uh, drivers I have inside and the uh, things I'm doing these days they are my hobbies like streaming right now with you guys talking to you guys i genuinely oh shit i genuinely enjoy streaming and speaking to you guys and i genuinely enjoy creating content some of it some not that much but i have to create it i genuinely enjoy trading uh not too much because i used to trade too much and i was just going crazy just swing trades spot trades doing a challenge i genuinely enjoy it so i would say that 90 percent of shit i do i actually genuinely enjoy so therefore i don't get that very much stress as per the negative stress i get stress but it's different type of stress so it is oftentimes not about fighting stress rather than structuring your life in a way that actually suits your character and that you actually enjoy doing the things you're doing so i think that that's that's more important Uh, what is your sleep plan i don't have a plan it's just sleep for me is I incredibly important if i don't sleep deep enough and well enough i behave like a piece of shit and i don't treat people very well because i become very edgy like a small baby so that's why like it's very important for me minimum eight hours a day or if like if i wake up and i feel like shit i cancel all my meetings and i go back to bed because sleep is everything so it contributes to stress so i usually go to sleep before 12 wake up around 8 9 and that's it's regular nothing special uh can you say about dot poor performance see the thing is that right now a lot of stuff is narrative driven so i would just wait because polka dot is a good project i mean they're not the best but i still have it part of my one of my portfolios very tiny bit but i think that everything will come with time you need to understand right now that also we're seeing huge dominance in bitcoin we see a lot of huge momentum on bitcoin simply because we have a lot of institutional money flowing into bitcoin and remember one simple truth that this money cannot go into Ethereum and then into altcoins unless there are ETFs available. So it used to be that Bitcoin would pump like crazy and then it would stagnate and then we would see altcoins pump, then meme coins. And these, this effect, especially with institutional money, will reduce a bit just because Bitcoin, like if BlackRock accumulates Bitcoin, they will stay in Bitcoin. That's it. So that's important to understand. So we need to wait. This is very hard to predict. The top cycle, the top target for Bitcoin, I don't know. Minimum 250,000. Minimum, in my opinion. Like, if it will be like 150, I will be disappointed. 250, okay, I will be happy. If it will be 500, I will be surprised. No, well, I shouldn't say surprised. I'd be very happy, but probably not that very surprised. 700,000 would be very surprised. So I'd probably put it this way. Thomas, how can I expand my social cycle and learn from them even though I don't have money at the moment? So, you know what I would start doing? If, like, Sophia's brother came to me the other day. He came to me, he said, Thomas, what should I do? Like, you probably know better than most. Please tell me, what's the plan? His name is Stefan. A great guy. Absolutely amazing individual. Great character. Very, very bright. Very, very smart. Very applies himself doesn't do stupid shit very pleasant as an individual so i sat there i was like okay what would i do right now and i said how much money do you have he told me thomas i have like i think he told me you know six thousand six thousand bucks or so 
So I was like, okay, 6,000. So he's 16. He, and actually he made that money himself because he was doing photography, different products, and he was making candles. And he's very, very clever, very artistic, very creative. So, um, and I was sitting there, okay, if I had 5K right now, literally 5,000, what would I do? Would I buy Bitcoin? No. Would I buy Ethereum? Maybe. But what I would really do, where you can make the craziest money in 2024, I would get into retro drops. And he actually is getting into retro drops right now because that's probably one of the easiest way to make 10x. Because in retro drops, uh, and that's what also I invested personally 1.2 million into retro drops and we've built a $10 million farm in the world of retro drops right now. We have one of the biggest farms in the world, which is 10% my farm and 90% my partner's farm. Like uh, my partners, meaning the people who came into it with me, we have like 70 partners, so 70 investors partners. So, and this is when basically you're participating in test nets and main nets. And when the token launches, they airdrop you the tokens as a gratuity for being part of the test nets. So it's like airdrops basically. But what ret how retro drops are different, you can actually automate them and create farms and have multiple accounts and therefore make, instead of a few thousand, you can literally make millions from it. And this is, will be only profitable for the time being while... Uh, people are not that active in crypto once they understand because it's free money. There is no trading risk. You just complete binary tasks in the mainnet and testnet of certain number of projects that are good. That's why we picked only like 10, 12 projects that are actually even worth farming. Uh, like uh, Layer Zero, uh, Starknet that just came out within 15x on Starknet. Uh, sadly, our farm didn't get into it because they did the snapshot in November. So you can easily do 10x in 2024 with retro drops if you farm the correct projects in a smart way. And then you can hold these tokens because even Starknet or Layer Zero or Linnea or DYDX that also did a drop or Arbitrum, whatever. These are all huge, amazing projects that we selected for our farm and like 10 of them, 12 of them for diversification because you always have to be careful with these things. Um, we'll probably like, you, you will get into these below listing price, probably 10 times lower. Fuck, it's insane. So, and for now, not too many people know about these things. So there is huge supply and small demand. So 2024, 2025, you can make 10x on that and probably even more because 10x is on the listing of the token. If you hold it for another 10x, which is more than possible, you can do 100x in the next literally two years from retro drops. And then I would have told this to Stefan, I said, Stefan, you can make at least 50k from 5k in a year with almost zero risk by doing retro drops. And, and by the way, guys, if you're interested in retro drops, there is also links to the webinar and all the information down in the description of this video. And you can also go to, uh, for more information on this, let me show you, there is a website. It's called, it's called wolfofretrodrops.com. Uh, and there is a training here that you can watch. So, oh shit. So go to wolfofretrodrops.com or there is also some links down in the description of this video, uh, the stream, and you can learn what retro drops are and how they work and etc. And I would probably start with this, make my first 50k out of 5k or more, and then reposition myself into Ethereum, Bitcoin and a bunch of altcoins. So I would be watching my own content and probably I would make my first 250,000 during this bull run, even from 5,000, it's more than possible if you do everything right and the luck is on your side or more. I know guys who made millions from literally almost fucking zero. It's insane. Like when the crypto pumps, it's, it's fucking insane. You just need to be educated and you just need to be ready to risk it all. And um, yeah, and then I also told him that he needs to do social media. He needs to promote himself, whatever, TikTok. Just if you have nothing today, Take your whatever you have, 1,000, 500, 5,000, 50,000, whatever, and start doing content. That's the, the th second thing. So first thing is retro drops, the investments, the cryptos, altcoins, schmaltcoins. That's the first thing. And the second thing, document your journey on TikTok, on Instagram, on YouTube. Pick up a fucking camera and start doing it. Because when I started doing YouTube, you can go in my YouTube back to my first videos. I was like... I was a fucking idiot. I looked like an idiot on camera. And I was like, uh, my name is Thomas Grallo. Uh, uh, and the guy who was filming was like, oh my God. 
Like he thought I am fucking, I have zero IQ or something because I was so horrible on camera. But then I, I got used to it because it's an amazing business. It's like you can scale yourself 100x if you are on social media, if you have fans, if you have followers. It's, it goes beyond monetization. Like there was some clown the other day. He went to the comment section and he said, I don't believe you. Why, if you're so rich, why would you be making monetized YouTube videos and make this pennies on the dollar? Like, ha, ha, ha. Listen, you fucking numb nuts. The reason why we make content is not because we make money from YouTube. Like, I'll be honest, I make, I can even pull it up somewhere in the YouTube studio. I don't have it here, but in the YouTube studio, I make like 3,000 bucks a month, literally from all the content I put out, Monet the reason why it's monetized is because if it's not monetized, YouTube doesn't push it as much into recommendations because YouTube wants to make money. So, and I'm making like 3,000 bucks from all the fucking content. It's insane. Even though my viewers are intelligent, so they're expensive viewers, 3,000 bucks. Dude, I spend more on a fucking dinner. So I don't really care about the stupid YouTube monetization. What I care about is my brand being out there, me promoting myself, raising money for my hedge fund, raising money for retro drops, selling my education, providing value to people, building my global reputation in the financial sector. That's why we do it. And I told him, document your journey. He's like, but I don't have like flashy cars. I have nothing to show. You don't need that. You can show your journey from zero. That's what I would do. I would start with my journey from zero and then your, your track record will be insane. Later, you will be able to sell any products. You will be able to promote yourself, your companies, your fucking brands or, you know, create partnership with other brands and make millions. Like it's insane. Right now, when you have social media, when you have 100,000 followers, which you can build in half a year, if you apply yourself or even faster, with 100,000 followers, you can make a million a year like this, like this. Easy, easy, fuck, if you're not stupid, easy. So therefore, and plus all the money you make from social media, you re I have done this. I've made money from social media. I had one rule, never scam people. Don't do anything stupid or something you will regret or something that will destroy your reputation. Ever, ever did I fucking do something in, at least in my mind that would make people like something bad for the people ever, ever. Even if I would sell something, education, whatever, I did my best to provide value, always. So that was always my rule. So in a lot of the money that I made, I reinvested. I've put it into Bitcoin. I've put it into this. So I just doubled it, tripled it, quadrupled it. And then I put it into this, into that, into this, back and forth, back and forth. So, and it's like, it's complementing one another. So you're in financial industry, create content about it. Watch my content, fucking duplicate my content if you need to. So, and then money you make, invest it into crypto, study it, build it. Remember the mega cycles and just be part of this whole journey and show it to people. And honestly, if Stefan, Sophia's brother, I don't know if you're watching right now, motherfucker, but if you are, if you do what I told you, the entire plan, you will be a millionaire before you're 18. Before you turn 18, you will be a millionaire. And it's, it's not that difficult if you apply yourself. That's it. And guys, I think that... Uh, Oh, that's also an interesting one. I don't remember how much money I had when I came to crypto, but I came to trading 10 years ago with 15,000. In the first few months, I lost almost all of it, and I basically started with $4,000. 4,000. And now I'm worth a lot. So my beginning was 4,000. Nobody gave me 10 million. Uh, can you explain to us how you felt when you made your first million dollars? I couldn't believe it. I was like, no way. Like these days, sometimes when we had a record month, you know, we had a month where I made more than a million dollars in one single month from just one thing. Like we launched a product plus we did, like we in total, I made like 3 million in one month recently, like Bitcoin pumped and we did the launch of the Wolf of Retro Drops and this, and I personally made like 3.8. It was, it was fucking degenerate amount of, like for me, it's not nothing crazy in the world right now, but for me, it was degenerate. And I was like, wow, 3.8. I think it was 3.8. So for me, it was something insane. And it like, till this day, sometimes I have, I have these crazy days when there's volume and this and that, and then trading and all my products and then affiliate marketing that I do with Bybit, I make commissions and stuff. So like some days I'm like, wow, 
I made, I just made in one day more than a doctor makes a year. So, and it's just insane. And it feels insane. You feel in fucking invincible. But at some point you get used to it. You align your thinking towards a bigger goal. So you use this blessing to actually create something. It feels good. It feels amazing. I'm not going to lie. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate it that you actually stuck around till the end. I really love you all. I hope that you've learned something today because I need to go. My uh, doorbell just rang and I have so many, many notifications. I need to take care of those. And there is a masseuse waiting. So I'm going to be getting a manicure, pedicure and a massage. And then I'm going to eat something and just go to bed. So I hope that you actually got something out of it. Please share the stream with your friends, family members. There is a share button here on YouTube. I really hope you've learned something. I just did it spontaneously just to give it to you, this information, because I just see that nobody's fucking talking about it. They're all just trying to sell you something. I also sell stuff, but it's all good stuff. So if you want to learn anything, all links are down in the description of this video. Quick shill. But uh, I also try to provide value while I'm making money as well. So... Uh, yeah, anyway, I hope you've got something out of it. And as always, peace and love. Thomas Crowell. Stay smart. Stay very rich. And I'll see you in the next video. Have a great weekend, everyone.